Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. Alright, so today I'm going to be painting cowboy kittens and I'm sipping on some wild berry tea and if you enjoy this process I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my patreon page where you'll find additional painting perks such as this one so the painting that I did today is an adorable <laughs> rendition or inspired by a super cute photo that was submitted by one of my patreon members by the name of Dita Stone I have a uh, benefit for my Patreon members whereby every now and again I'll put out a call for photos they'll submit them I select a few of them to turn into YouTube tutorials and as a thank you I will send the original off to whoever submitted the photo so I hope she likes this because it, she doesn't I'm gonna keep it for myself <laughs> anyways um, so if you're interested in learning how you too could submit your photos for me to turn into you YouTube tutorials and or learn more about the Patreon membership program where there's a bunch of other benefits to to enjoy. I have all of that information down below in the video description. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you could certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today my colors are titanium white, burnt umber, which I like to call brown, burnt sienna, which sometimes I call rust, deep yellow, Mars black, cobalt blue, and fire red. And of course you can switch up those colors, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a white piece of chalk that I'm gonna be using for some drawing. And then I have four brushes from my personal brush line, which I just dropped one. And it's handed to me now. <laughs> I have four brushes for my personal brush line, which is Michelle the Painter brushes. I have a three quarter inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number six bright synthetic brush. And then I have a number zero and a number three round synthetic brushes. And I'll just call them out as I use them. And of course you can switch those up as well. If you're painting along with me, you're probably gonna wanna have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I do provide you with a few additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link to my shop where you could purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using for this painting. So it would be the same size and type of canvas to the same type of paints and brushes and all the good stuff in between. You can also, in my shop, purchase things individually, like the brushes from my brush line. So that's there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna be painting a base coat onto the canvas. I'm gonna use my large bristle brush to paint, but I'm gonna use my number six bright to pre-mix myself a custom color that I'll be using as my base coat for the canvas, which I have already magically made my, my custom color here on my palette, which I'm gonna call tan. So how I got to this color is a lot of white and brown, and then I used a little bit of yellow to give it kind of a um, kind of a richer golden tan type of a color. My brown and white tends to be a little bit on the duller side. So if I want to saturate that neutral tone, that tan tone, I add a little bit of yellow to it and that does it for me. And <laughs> that, that brings it into the realm that I would like. So that's looking pretty good for me. So now I'm gonna put my mixing tool away. I'm gonna pick up my large bristle brush and I'm gonna paint the entire canvas with this color. So I'm gonna be using this as a base coat for my wall as well as the there's a little um, floorboard molding that we're going to be putting on between the wall and the floor and even the wood floor all of the elements of this um, 
that I just spoke of, the wall, the baseboard molding, and the wood floor, I feel have this type of tone within them. So as I'm deciding how to begin the painting, that's one of those elements I'm, I'm considering. Can I, can I use a common color to, to form the foundation of the painting? And in this case, it was an easy kind of decision because I saw this, I'm working off of a photo reference, and I saw this color in all of those areas. So I was able to use it or utilize it as my base, my base tone in order to kind of set the stage, um, again, build that, that footage or that ground groundwork of the, the painting, the foundation of the painting, the framework. And I'm just, I'm not using any special brush stroke. I'm really just looking to get a full coverage on here. This type of color is, it covers really well. It's got good opacity in it because there's a lot of white in it. So as I'm going through this process of just kind of laying it down as my base coat, I know that it's covering pretty well. So I don't necessarily need to use any special brush stroke, but once I've got it all on here, it is pretty, it is still pretty wet. So I can take my brush and just lightly go back and forth left to right. What this does is it'll help to level out the paint, even though acrylic is self-leveling. If you have some really thick spots or perhaps you've missed a couple of spots, this just helps to unify that, um, that layer for you. And then once I've got this done, I will be using, um, I'm going to use my chalk and this brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry this large brush just go back and forth one more time wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to draw an outline for our wall and our floor with our chalk and then i'm going to use my large paintbrush to paint the wall so what I'm going to do, is, I do recommend that your canvas is dry before you start the step as well. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be drawing a couple of straight lines and then we're going to use our large brush to paint in the wall with the colors I'm going to use are white, tan, yellow, and blue. I'm going to create a custom kind of sage, light green type of a color for the wall. So I'm going to start by making my, drawing my outlines. I'm going to find myself about halfway up or down my left hand side. So for me, that's somewhere in this vicinity. And then I'm going to go down from that about three, three and a half inches somewhere in this vicinity, give myself a marker. Then what I can do with my large paintbrush is I can measure how far down I made that mark. And then I can come to the other side of my canvas, make myself another mark at about the same height. And you could even go across and make yourself as many markers as you want, or you can whip out a straight edge kind of um, tool to connect these two dots, or you can freehand it, whatever you're comfortable with, and then I just connect my dots. I don't need this to be uber perfect right now because we're gonna be painting over it. It's just gonna give me a place to start. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come, you can go back to your halfway mark and then come up about half to three quarters of an inch from there. So something like this. And then you could do a similar exercise with your measuring, your fancy measuring tool to see how far away from this line you made that line. So for me, it's right about here. And then I can do the same exercise with making as many markers as I want across that are gonna give me a decent shot at making a pretty uh, horizontal line without too much wobbles. So that's good. And then I'm gonna do two more lines on my floor, which is gonna separate my floor boards. So I'm gonna find myself about halfway make, uh, on this line like here, and then go to the left of that about two, two and a half inches, make myself a mark. And then over here, I, I think I'm about three, one, two, about three inches in from the edge of the canvas like that. I'm gonna come down to the bottom of my canvas, come in about an inch to an inch and a half, I'm going to connect these two with a diagonal line. Again, doesn't need to be perfect. Mine's definitely not perfect. And then I'm going to go to the left of this about an inch and come straight down to the bottom of my canvas. So something like that. So this one is diagonal, but just 
slightly. And that's all I'm going to do for my outline. So now I'm going to paint the wall. I'm going to be using my uh, number three round brush to show you how I'm going to pre-mix a custom color here. So I have already made my color on my palette here. This is, I'm going to call this sage for a sage green color. Sage is kind of a warm, dull, green, neutral color. So, but I'm on the lighter side. I am lighter than my tan. So just know as you do create this, you want to be lighter than that. So I'm going to use a lot of white a little bit of my tan, because that's going to be my neutralizer, <laughs> a touch of blue, and a touch of yellow. So blue and yellow makes green. Oops, I need it in there. <laughs> blue and yellow makes green. The tan is going to neutralize it. So just a little bit of my blue and yellow, maybe a little bit more yellow than that. And then just start spinning it together. You might find it's a little bit, well, that was just too much, too, not enough pigment in there. Um, you might find it's to blue or to yellow or to brown and you just adjust it once you once you start seeing that color emerge I am just adding a little tiny bit of color at a time so it doesn't you know if it does go a little bit too blue I can just add a teeny tiny touch of yellow into it and that'll steer it back towards green but because I'm just using a dot of pigment at a time it's allowing me to control that color um, without it going too, too much in one direction or the other. And I can easily pull it back if I need to. So that's the color I'm headed for here. So once I've got my color um, preference, and of course your wall could be any color that you want, I'm going to pick up my large brush, take some of that new Greek color that we have, a new green, I'm going to put it over here on the left-hand side of my wall. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get it to be um, lighter or more sage color here and fade into that darkness over on the right hand side. So I'm going pretty heavy with my with my wall color in through here and once you get I would say maybe about a third of the way over I'm just using a left to right kind of crisscross type of a brush stroke once I start getting right about here I'm going to start picking up some of my tan with my with my green. So this is going to give me a um, both colors on my brush at the same time and I just kind of get them to blend in with one another. You could use a vertical, you could use a um, horizontal brush stroke, you could even use kind of a swirling brush stroke, whatever works best for you. Just know it's going to dry a little bit darker and a little bit different than it is when it's wet. So as you go, just kind of blend as you go. And now I'm just picking up my, um, my tan color so on my dirty brush so as i'm going over toward this right hand side i'm just going to get it to go darker and darker or steering into that tan color and just getting these to kind of blend as i as they're drying and of course you can do multiple layers with this if you feel that that will help you but the attention on this painting is going to be the cute little cats in the boots <laughs> so the, consider this wall to just kind of be background noise um, I'm thinking that that's a pretty good blend going on in through there so I'm just gonna finish this out with my tan color and even if you um, are fully tan over on this side I would still do a second coat just to ensure that you didn't miss any spots I see a couple spots around the edges that could definitely use a second coat and you can see I'm bumping into my um, my my chalk outline which is totally fine because that's just there for a guide to help stop me in my tracks on this wall and if you wanted to you could certainly make this darker over here but I think I'm going to be putting a little shadow behind my boot anyway so that'll darken that up and then once you've got this done we're going to be using our um, we're going to use our bright brush for the next step so you can put this large brush away if you can ever get this blended as much as you want and take, put this large brush away take out your bright brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to do the first layer of the baseboard and the floorboards so the boards i guess <laughs> i'm using my uh bright brush the colors i'm going to use are brown burnt sienna and tan I'm going to be having the baseboard in through here is going to be a little bit 
deeper and darker in tones. So I'm going to be using more brown and burnt sienna up here. And then down on the floorboards, I'm going to be using more of my tan and brown and maybe a little bit of burnt sienna. What I'm really looking to do is give my base coat of what's going to be a wood textured element. So I'm going to be using this brush and giving myself the wood grain appearance on these elements. So I'm going to start with the top one. I'm going to pick up some burnt sienna and brown on my brush at the same time. I'm going to be using this pretty heavy so I can really get a nice deep tone in through here. And once I've got a, a good area before it dries, what I can do is kind of take my brush and give myself the these little um, lighter streaks in it that are going to make it appear as if those are the wood grain to um, to that element. I'm using both colors on my brush at the same time. So one time maybe it's a little bit lighter, maybe one time it's a little bit darker. But as I'm as I'm going through this, I I don't want to have like vertical cut marks is what I refer to them as. I want them more to be kind of horizontal, maybe a little slanted, and that's going to give me um, that long wood grain appearance. And I'm just going to keep going until I get to my top. I'm not concerned about it being a, um, a perfectly executed edge yet because I do know that I've got one more step that I'll be using um, to, to finish these up. So if I do have um, any areas that are not perfect on my on my execution here, I can certainly uh, take care of that later. So if you wanted a lighter spot, you can certainly just kind of take this. You could even, while it's wet, you could even kind of pull some away. Not necessarily with your finger, but you could pull it away with a paper towel or something like that if you wanted there to be lighter marks. Or conversely, if you wanted there to be like a little knot, you could put like a little bit of a darker area in through there. So you could really have fun with how you, how you um, fully execute this. I'm going to just kind of go up towards my top marker now and go straight across while I can still see my uh, outline there and you could get this top area to be more out of focus too if you're not confident on your on your um, drawing ability for this straight line you could certainly just soften it by going back and forth and almost overlapping it a little bit in that wall um, and you could also come back and and give it another um, layer on your wall too if need be but again there's going to be lots of i'm going to have a shadow behind my boots i'm going to have a little edge to my um to my molding here so we've got a lot of other details that are going to distract us from any imperfections so i'm thinking that that's looking pretty good for this section and again i know i'm going to have another um another layer on this i think i want more maybe a couple more little marks in through here. I'm just picking up some brown, getting just a little bit darker in through here because I know I want this this one to be a little bit darker than than the bottom one. So just making sure I've got everything in there that I want for this step. And then I'm going to now go down into my floorboards. So my floor is going to be a little bit on the lighter side. So this is where I'm going to be using or lighter con compared to this one in through here. So my floor, I'm going to be using more of my brown plus my tan. But these lines in through here are the separation between the floorboards. So I'm going to take just brown on my dirty brush and just kind of come down in through here. I don't need it to be um, a super clean line. So as you're going, if you want to just soften it up a little bit, you can certainly do that. But this will give you that information that these are those little, um, the separation between the floorboards. And the most difficult part is going to be where this meets this edge up in through here. So as I'm doing this, I want my my lines to kind of go in conjunction with these guys in through here. So as I'm coming over on this left hand side, you can even just do what I'm doing right here. Just give yourself a couple of kind of faint guidelines. So this way, as you're um, building these floorboards, you're giving it perspective by allowing for those um, 
those directional marks to go in that type of direction. I still have just my um, dirty brush right now. I'm going to sweep it across my chalk mark up in through here. Again, this is my dirty brush, so I have remnants of that brown on my brush right now. I swept it across there, and now what I can do is I can just kind of pull down even more in through here. And again, I'm trying to keep it in that same direction. I'm actually going to just put a little bit of water on my brush so I can make sure that I'm coming down um, from this edge more in line with those with those marks that I've already made and keeping with the same idea of what I did up top I can every now and again I can put a little thicker mark maybe maybe do like a little horseshoe or something to indicate the um, the little knots in the wood or the different kind of um, textural grains of it and I'm just gonna I'm keeping on with my brown and maybe a touch of water on my brush to start this um, this floorboard and again just a little bit of brown I'm utilizing that color that tan from underneath in order to help me get the lighter tones within these floorboards so the the image that I'm using and again a little bit of water on my brush the image that I'm using has the um, the floor is a little bit lighter than that baseboard so I'm just trying to capture a pretty similar representation I'm not going for photorealism or anything like that on this one but I am definitely going for something that I feel could be um, a good representation of this photo and again right up here is pretty much the the toughest part so just as I'm doing it I'm watching my um, those initial guidelines and this is going to help me stay going in the correct direction and even up in this little piece up and through here you can make it almost disappear into that little crevice I'll probably do another little layer on there as I go to finish it up um, but you can see every now and again that burnt sienna is kind of relief releasing itself from my brush because I I didn't wash my brush picking up a little bit more brown to get maybe a couple of little darker marks in through here but again all the while just staying in that same direction um, that I have my my initial lines in. I'm going to put some more dark stuff down in through here trying to keep it not too perfect looking. I am going to have again another step on this um, both of these elements so if yours is not perfect at this point don't there's no need to worry <laughs> because we're gonna have another step that will help to um, get any any more information in it that that you may desire and then once you're done with this we are going to be using the same brush for the next step so you can just wash it and dry it and get ready All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish the wood. So the baseboard and the wood boards. I'm going to be using, or the floorboards. I'm going to use my number six bright brush. The colors I'm going to use are the same that I did on the first time. So brown, burnt sienna, tan, and I might use a little white too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my final details on. I do want there to look like there's a couple of horizontal um, marks for these floorboards that they're meeting. They look like old wide planked farm floorboards. So I, I want to have, I'm emulating what's in the photo and there's a little separation between a couple of these boards. So I'm going to put some horizontal lines. I'm going to um, come up to the top of here, clean this up a little bit and put a little edge on, t on the uh, on the floor board or the molding whatever you want to call it baseboard molding so there's a little edge so it'll look a little three-dimensional and then we'll clean up uh, these two edges as well and we'll put a couple extra highlights and shadows on here and by the time we're done we'll have a, a wonderfully executed wood textured baseboard and floor so I'm um, again I recommend it's dry before you start the step what I'm first going to do is put in the horizontal lines on the floor here so I'm going to pick up a little bit of my brown I'm going to come up here maybe about an inch and a half and just put a loose, soft kind of um, 
brown line in through here. Again, similar to how I did this one, just you don't need to do much, just giving it a loose line. I wanted to do these ones second, so that way the um, we didn't have to skip over them to make the wood grain um, appear natural. So this was just a little trick that I thought would be helpful in the wood making process. <laughs> so the wood grain making process. So that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to just pick up a little bit more of my brown and uh, clean up this top line as best as I can. Again, I'm not, for me, uh, if you watch me paint a lot, you'll know that I the need for perfection does not really exist <laughs> too strongly in my painting world, but if you feel that you have to get this perfect, you could certainly um, really spend a good amount of time on this and making sure that it is really uh, as perfectly executed as you need it to be. Uh, but for me, I, I'm going to just kind of go for a, as good as I can get it. <laughs> <laughs> in, in this kind of atmosphere. That looks pretty good to me. <laughs> and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a similar exercise uh, where the, the baseboard meets the floor. So I'm just going to use a little bit of brown and make sure that um, I've got that baseboard kind of uh, really kind of kissing the, um, the floorboard. So that way it looks like it's nice and fully executed and it's the carpenter did a very good job button the two pieces up together um, but as I'm doing this you can see you know cleaning it up is just making it look a little bit more finished um, and that we've attended to all of the areas as much as we um, should have attended to them I think sometimes a little details like this can get overlooked which isn't a bad thing but you know if you can catch them and, and do them that's that's fabulous and then I'm just kind of poking my brush through in through here making sure I didn't miss any spots. I feel like I want another little knot or something over here because I know this one's going to get hidden by my boot. <laughs> so if you now's the time if you want to make any other little adjustments to uh, the wood grain or anything you can certainly do that. I feel like I want a little bit more burnt sienna up in through here as well. So just bringing in a little bit more of the burnt sienna. Burnt sienna for me is going to be um, really a transparent color so it allows for me to almost just kind of tint this wood if I wanted it to be a little bit more richer of a tone I can just bring in a little bit more of that burnt sienna it's almost going to look like it's more on the newer side of wood if you will um, and just kind of making sure that I've got all of my little spots that's looking pretty good. I'm going to also put a little light edge at the top. So I'm going to just pick up Burnt Sienna with a tiny bit of white on my brush. So Burnt Sienna and white. And I'm just going to kind of go maybe about a quarter of an inch away from the edge. This is dangerous right now because I'm. <laughs> this is all wet. I know my, my hand is going to go right through it. But we're just going to kind of skip across like this. There we go. We can do it. We got this. So this is a little bit of burnt sienna and white just allowing for a little 3D edge to occur here. And if you wanted it any more than that, you certainly could. But I'm just going to allow mine to be what it is. So that looks good. I got myself a little edge there. And now I'm going to move down to um, the floorboards. There we go. I might have to put a little more of my sage green in that spot, but we'll see what happens when I finish painting the rest of it. So down on the floorboards, I'm going to be using a, a maybe a little bit more brown in these little crevices. So think of these as just the little crevices between those floorboards. So just if you feel you want it darker, you could even pick up a tiny bit of black paint if you wanted to get it even darker. But I'm thinking that this brown, once it dries, is going to be as dark as I need it. And then I can add any additional marks that I want. So again, this is just the brown on my brush right now. I can sit here and say, okay, well, I want some of these um, marks to be even more dramatic. Or maybe you want to add more. Or maybe you want um, this you know, the bottom section to have a different grain than the top section. So don't feel that you have to, you know, do exactly as I'm doing in through here. I'm just kind of 
uh, manipulating it, making sure that I have everything painted in. That's my main goal is to just make sure that it doesn't look like I missed any spots. So I'm going to just continue to um, pull down, you know, or bring in some wood grain or some um, additional information if I feel that a, a specific section looks like it's unpainted. So I'm not necessarily painting over with a flat color of anything um, to, to account for spots that I might have missed, but in through here, I know that my shoes or the boots are going to be taking up the majority of this, so I don't need to pay a ton of attention to it. I just want to make sure that the um, the bottom portion that is going to be seen by the the viewer or um, uh, it comes poking out underneath those boots. I want to make sure that I've got enough information in through there. Over on this right hand side, I'm feeling like this has enough wood grain, but maybe I want a couple more little. Um, knots or something again that just really steers the viewer to understanding that they're looking at a wood grain texture. You could certainly have a flat um, floor if you wanted to or a ceramic floor, whatever you want, but for me my goal today is to have it looking like it's got a wood grain texture. So that looks pretty good to me as far as um, the dark uh, colors that I want to incorporate down here. Now I need a little bit of a um, my chalk just rolled into my burnt sand. I guess I don't gonna have to get a new piece of chalk for that. Um, I'm gonna add a little tinge of the burnt sienna, but I don't want a lot. Just something that's gonna give it a little bit of um, that hue. So I just washed my brush. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of burnt sienna with a little bit of water. So this is where I can, I'm almost using it kind of as like a glaze on the wood. So this is a fun um, tool to use if you want to just change the hue of something just a little bit or add um, like a reflection of sorts on something just adding this little this little hint of, of, of an additional color with a what's referred to as a glaze will help you add many more um, the, the depth to your to your colors it will really pop out it'll give you much more information in the in the um, elements of it I'm going to put quite a bit over in through here and I'm using it predominantly in the same direction as I was using the wood grain but if you are truly using a glaze and your color underneath is fully dry you could in essence use any directional brush stroke that you want or put it in any um, direction you want. So that's looking pretty good. Now what I'm going to do is I just want to add a couple little highlights on the edges of um, those uh, wood pieces the, uh, where they meet each other. So I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of my tan uh, plus a little bit of white. I think I want this to go a little bit lighter than it is. So tan plus white. I'm going to just kind of add a little highlight above this um, dip in the um, in the wood slat and then just kind of uh, rub this up just a little bit so it's almost as if the edge of this um, piece of wood is illuminated just a little bit from that strong light source over on the on the left side I can also do it right on the um, the edge of this one in through here so just a little bit these are just those little tricks that'll help again give you just a little bit more information and I can also do it on this one in through here so tan plus a little bit of white and I can just stick a little little kind of highlight over here as if it's catching a little bit of that light source not a huge big um, detail but again it could help maybe even a little bit in through here it could help to again give those 3d elements to it and then I would let mine dry and if there's any little fiddling or any additional bits of information that I want I will certainly add that but I'm thinking that it's looking pretty good right now so I'm going to uh, put this brush away I'm going to take out my drawing utensil for the next step so you can do the same and just get ready All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be drawing an outline for our boots and our cats. <laughs> I'm using my 
a uh, piece of chalk. You could certainly use any drawing utensil that's comfortable to you. I do recommend that your canvas is dry before you start this step as well. So I'm going to guide you through a series of markers. We're going to connect those markers and by the time we're done we'll have some very basic shapes that we'll be able to utilize during the painting in process. So we're not going for any fine-tuned detail, just something very basic that can put our objects in good placement for the painting process. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to find myself the center of the top line for my um, for my baseboard. So for me, that's somewhere right about in through here. Then I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the right of that about a quarter of an inch, give myself another marker, and to the left about three quarters of an inch. So the width between these two should is about an inch. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over from the right hand side of my canvas and come over, I would say, maybe um, three and a half inches or so. So the width between here and here is about four inches. And I'm going to do the same thing here. So from the width to here to here is about the same as whatever you do over here. So something like that. So it might be, it's going to be a little bit closer to the edge over here than it is that. So the next two markers I'm going to do are going to be directly below these two on this line here, but they're going to be slightly more narrow than these two. So you can come just directly down and go in maybe just about a quarter of an inch. Same thing, make this bigger so you can see it. So same thing here, just come straight down and then in about a quarter of an inch. So this area that we're putting markers in for now is going to represent like the ankle part of the boot so it'll be kind of the most narrow part so again come down to my baseboard line and come in just maybe maybe an eighth quarter of an inch not much at all same thing here straight down and in just a, a little itty bitty bit then what i'm going to do is i'm going to come down kind of between these two so these are the two boots I'm going to come down between the two of them and come straight down until I'm maybe about a, a half of an inch away from the edge of or the bottom of my canvas, something like that. So before I go up into the top detail, we'll just get the bottom portion of the boots outlined and then we'll go and do the top portion. So I'm going to do uh, what's going to be our left boot in through here. So these are going to come down and kind of almost bubble at the toe. So I'm going to, I can take it from here. I'm going to bring it down and meet my other marker. I think the trick for me on these is just not go super duper straight. These are old weathered boots that have lots of wrinkles and ripples in them. So if when you're when you're drawing your outline, if you can, you know, put in these little waves in the sides of the leather part of the boot. That's going to make it look a little bit more natural. As I come down to this toe, I'm going to do the left side first because I think this side's a little bit easier. I'm going to take it um, and just kind of almost come straight down like this and right about here is where I'm going to curve it in towards my marker. And then on the right side, it's going to come out a little bit farther than that. So I'm going to take it from here I'm going to bring it out just a little bit and then I can kind of curve it back in and bring it up to my marker. On the other boot, our right boot, I'll do the outside first. So again, just going to take it from here, bring it down to my marker, and then from here it's going to come out a little bit. So bring it down and then out just a little bit, bring it to my marker, and then same thing here, I'm going to bring here bring it to my marker and then as I come and do this one the boots just about touch they might even be touching in the photo but it's kind of hidden or disguised by some little shadows so which will will account for as well but as you're doing your drawing process I don't know if they touch they might they might not <laughs> so something like that will give us our start the next thing I'm do, gonna do is I'm gonna uh, make the top part of the boots so if you find yourself about halfway between here and here, so for me that's right somewhere in here, I'm going to go up about an inch and a half, give myself a marker. And then on this one, the corresponding marker is a little bit to the, to the right of the center. So if I find myself the center and go up about an inch, inch and a half, I'm going to go to the right of that a little bit, maybe about a quarter of an inch. The boot is a little bit um, turned differently from one side to the other. 
I'm going to do finish this one first because this one, the uh, top part sits in front of this one. It overlaps a little bit here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come straight up from here. So straight up until I would say I'm about maybe uh, one, two, three inches from the top. And then I'm going to go out to the right just a little bit, maybe about a half of an inch to an inch. I can connect here to here. And then I'm going to connect here to down in through here. So the little um, dip in the boots is kind of a V, but it's a soft V. It's not a super super pointy V. And then same thing here, I'm gonna go straight up, but this one, I'm not gonna go as high as this one, cause this one we're gonna see like a different um, side to it. So I'm gonna go uh, straight up from here. I'm gonna um, stop, I'm gonna say uh, right about in through here and go to the left just a little bit. So somewhere in through here. So I'm a little, maybe a half of an inch to an inch below that one. And then I'm gonna take this and just connect it like that. And then I'm going to connect here, up and through here. This side I do need to put a little kind of loop thing on. Um, so I'm going to come down here maybe about an inch. I'm going to go straight up, give myself just a little bit of a loop like that around that corner. That's going to be the little leather part on the side. Now I can start to build this one. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to connect it to right about here. This is gonna, that corner of the boot is stuck, is snuck behind there. I'm gonna take from right in this intersection, connect to here, and then over on the left hand side, I can kind of mark or go from this marker here, straight over to the left, and I'm a little bit to the left of here. So somewhere in this vicinity is where this marker is gonna be. I'm gonna take here, connect to here, and then here, connect to here. And I'm gonna give myself a similar little loop on this side, but maybe not as dramatic or as big. So something like that. Now I just need to make a couple of cute cat heads, <laughs> kitten heads. <laughs> so I'm gonna take it from here, this corner here, and this corner here, and I'm gonna find the center of those two. So somewhere in about here, I'm gonna go straight up until I'm about an inch away from the top of my canvas. And now I can connect these with just a curved line. This will be the top of one kitten head. I'm gonna put a couple of cute little ears. So I'm gonna take it from here um, and meet it somewhere in this vicinity. Just give myself a little kind of cute pointy ear. Same thing over here, right about here and here. And then just kind of connect it up at the top. I'm gonna to do a similar process for over here. The arcing line is going to come from about here, so about halfway down that one and a little bit down that one. Find yourself the center of these two, which for me is about here, and I'm going to come up. I'm going to be about almost two inches or an inch and a half away from the top. So this little, this little kitten's shorter than that little kitten, or at least sunk into the boot a little bit more. <laughs> and then I'm going to take here and just connect those. I'm going to have a couple of ears, so from here to this one kind of disappears in through here and this ear is not any taller than that one so just a little bit shorter than that one and then over here this kitten's head is kind of tipped <laughs> these are so cute um so from there it's going to meet in through here and i'm going to have a little point in like that and that's all i'm going to be doing for my outline i am going to be using my number six bright for the bright brush for the next step you could certainly erase this little center marker if you need to. Um, so you can make any little fiddling adjustments that you feel are necessary. Take out your bright brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the base coat for our cats and our boots. I'm gonna be using my number six bright to paint, but I'm gonna use my number three round to premix two more custom colors. So I'm gonna make a custom boot brown <laughs> and I'm gonna make a custom beige color that I'm gonna be using for the base coat for my cats. Even though my cats are gonna be different colors in the end, again, I'm seeing this common color between them, so I'm gonna use it as a base coat. So I have pre-mixed my colors down on my palette. The colors that I'm gonna use for, for this step are, um, let's see, yellow, burnt sienna, brown, white, and tan. 
And this color right in through here is my custom boot brown. And what this is a mixture of is burnt sienna brown, yellow, and white. I really wanted something kind of right between the two of these that has a little bit of a little bit better opacity um, and is just a nice complementary color that as I add my highlights and shadows and the rich tones of the, the leather, this will work out pretty well. So this is about equal parts of my brown and burnt sienna with a little bit of yellow and just a touch of white in it. So the white's going to help with the opacity for me and then the yellow helps to prevent it from going too dull. So if I just did brown, um, burnt sienna and white, it might become a little pasty looking. So I wanted to add a little bit more um, pigment where is which is where the yellow came into play. So this is about where I'm headed. Think of this almost as like a milk chocolate type of a color. So that's where I'm going with that. The beige tone that I've got going on here is mostly white. And then I have a tiny bit of red and a tiny bit of yellow and a tiny bit of my tan. So this is gonna give me this nice, rich, beige type of a tone. I think I need a little bit more yellow in my mixture. That's a little bit too pink for me, so I'm gonna add a touch more yellow in it. Again, I want it to be nice and light, but I want it to have some color to it. So it's an, it's an off-white color that has a little bit of um, like a Peach, not, it's not peach, it's not yellow, it's not brown, it's somewhere in the middle. So we're just going to call it a nice beige color, an off-white kind of antique -y color. So those are the two tones I'm going for. I'm going to first um, paint in my boots with my um, chocolate boot color. <laughs> so in through here, again, don't need to do an, anything perfect on this first uh, pass. You're going to notice as I go from the light area to the dark area that you'll most likely be able to see through my um, paint. That's totally fine at this stage. That's why I do multiple layers. I personally work with a um, student grade paint which tends to have fillers in it which makes it more transparent but it works awesome for my painting techniques and style. So that's why I love using this because I love to layer and this helps me get those um, those translucent layered type of appearances. So it works well for me. Up and through here, this is where there's that little piece of the um, boot that is almost like a little strap on the side. So I'm just going to paint this in. You're going to notice as I go through this painting process that I leave a lot of the evidence of my outlines um, because for me that helps me through my painting process so I don't get lost um, too early <laughs> or I don't make my objects bigger than they should be made or bigger than I wanted them to be made so you'll notice this you know I do it quite frequently well I just made that a little bit bigger but that's all right um, you'll notice quite frequently that I just leave that evidence of that outline because it helps me. I, you know, I know where my my weaknesses are, or at least what I perceive to be my weaknesses, and leaving these outlines just helps me. And I like using my chalk because I know that it is a drawing utensil that can be easily erased with a little bit of water, so I don't I don't have to fear it you know, tainting my, my painting, you know, down the line. There goes that beautiful knot that I just painted, I painted earlier. I, that always happens to me when I'm painting stuff like this where I know that I want to, um, I have to paint the element behind it so it looks nice and natural around the sides. I always put my favorite element or the, the favorite little detail right behind um, the thing that's going to paint be painted over it. It's just the way it works for me. Um, and I'm just going all the way down to the bottom of the boot. I am, um, I'm not doing too um, purposeful of a directional brush stroke, but I am trying to keep it kind of on the smoother side um, as opposed to uh, having tons of streakiness. So 
I am as I'm going through this. I'm using quite a bit of paint and a light touch to it. Um, so that way it's on the smoother side, but I still have some streaking in it, which I'll be able to um, get out when I, when I paint future steps. But I know I wanted a pretty good coverage on this step without, um, you know, without needing to, to come back with too many additional layers of this color. So I'm going pretty heavy handed with the quantity of paint, but a little light on the pressure. So that way um, it allows for a little bit smoother of a look. And I'm just kind of going down these sides. I need a little bit more paint on my brush. Um, it, and my edges don't have to be really clean at this point. Um, we've got a lot of details that we're going to be doing on these boots. So as you're going through your process, if you know you if you're feeling like you want your edges to be perfect, especially when they're on that um, on that wall, I wouldn't I wouldn't be too terribly concerned about it at this point because again we've got lots of little details that that will help to eliminate those later. So that looks pretty good in through there. And again, don't worry about this streakiness. We'll be able to um, get that to go away later. I'm gonna wash and dry my brush, and now I'm gonna put on the base coat for my cats. I'm gonna start with the boot that I started with first. So that way, again, I know I'm gonna bump into it, but <laughs> at least this one will be a little bit drier for me. As uh, So I'm picking up my, my beige color I think that's what I called it. <laughs> and I'm just going to paint this in. The only place that I am really concerned about um, the effect that I'm going to get is around the edges because I'm going to want, for me personally, to start that little fur texture. But uh, where it's meeting everywhere else, like inside this boot, I'm not um, concerned about my directional brush stroke because, again, I have lots of of painting to go. We're going to be putting lots of little shadows um, within the fur in the boot, so I'm not concerned about that. But up at the top, if you want to start that little fluff um, texture, you can just kind of uh, use the corner of your brush and just give yourself this little soft edge around there. And then even over on by these ears, you could pull out a couple of little pieces of, of fur. Ooh, I know, I want to do one other little thing. There's a little um, saggy part or scrunched part of the cat's face over the corner of this boot. I'm going to pull that out a little bit. It's a super cute little piece. <laughs> it's like his little face is all squished over there. Um, so I'm going to bring that and maybe just a little, little kind of pieces of fur out there. And then the ears. The ears are pretty um, smooth looking initially. I'm probably going to have a couple of little white pieces um, on this on this cat and then on the other cat probably a couple of little black pieces along the ears. So right now I'm just going to keep them kind of smooth along the um, along the edges and then I'll put that little fur texture with oh, that ear just grew a little bit. Um, I'll put that little fur texture on later with those those ones. I don't see much All right, in through here so we're just going to do that. And then with the other cat just get this, make sure I don't miss any spots. There we go. So the other cat, again, I'm just gonna use this as my base coat. I know that this is gonna be a darker cat, but it's got a lot of lightness in the face. So I'm just opting for ease of painting um, so we can kind of tackle it in a, in a um, easy systematic way. I'm choosing to do the same color for, for both of these cats as the base coat. A lot of times you'll find I use a dark base for um, fur or a darker tone, but I like to show you guys different techniques. So today I'm going to just show you a technique with where you can start with a light color if you want to, because there is no one perfect technique. Um, it's just a matter of finding a process that works, works for you. Um, so I felt like it would be a good lesson here to show you if you were to start with a light color how can you bring that into a dark looking cat so we're going to do a dark cat for this one and a light cat for this one so you'll be able to see both processes which is pretty fun and then i'm going to go ahead and get this guy this little ear in through here trying to keep some of my um 
my outline evident, and then we're going to use this same brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry this bright brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is the second step <laughs> on the boots. I'm using my number six bright brush. The colors that I'm going to use are my custom boot brown, black, burnt sienna, tan, maybe a little bit of white. And if I use any other colors, I'll let you know. I'm not sure if I'm going to use any other colors. So what I'm looking to do here is add the, the dominant colors to create the contours in the boots. So these boots are going to kind of have wrinkles and stuff where the ankles meet the, the foot part. There's also some little wrinkles kind of on the bridge of the foot um, area. There's shadows on the sides of the boots which are going to create the contour of um, it being round. So I'm, oh, and I need to put the, the sole of the boot on as well. So I'm looking to do a second layer that's going to have my shadows and my highlights and start this, the little sole process of, um, of the boots. We're going to come back on a future step to do all the details with the, with the stitching and um, all the decorative elements to it and the fine-tuned little details. But this step is primarily to get the form in shape and to get those highlights and shadows where um, they will create the um, th almost 3D effect of these. So I'm going to start with a tiny bit of black paint on my brush and I'm going to work from my dark to my light. So the first thing I'm going to do is just um, put the soles of the, of the shoes on or of the boots. So I'm just creating a small little arcing section down at the bottom. It's going to be bigger at the bottom and then it's going to be more narrow as it kind of goes around the side of the um, of the boot. So these particular boots, I just put a tiny bit of water on my brush, these particular boots you can see a little bit, the, the sole comes out a little bit farther than um, the boot itself around uh, that bottom portion so I'm just going to I just bump it out just a little bit where it's kind of um, emerging from the side of the, the shoe like that. So that looks pretty good. Maybe a little bit, that was a little bit too much water on my brush here. It's all right. Uh, just, there we go. <laughs> we got it now. Um, on this side and through here, it's going to be in like this. And this interior edge is really going to be um, almost disappear within the shadows that we're going to be putting in a little while. Uh, the right hand side of this edge comes, I would say, somewhere up and through here is where I'm seeing it emerge from the edge of the shoe. So I'm going to just emulate that somewhere in through here and then just get it to blend or size into that front section which is a little bit larger and yours doesn't have to be exactly the same size as mine it can you know we're going to be putting details on it which will make it um which will make it have more life to it but that's just going to start that process so i also know i have a couple other pretty dark areas so while i've got this black on my brush i'm going to pick up a little bit more black plus my boot brown so black plus that um kind of chocolatey color. <laughs> I've got a little dark area in through here that I'm going to put on. I have a little dark area in through here. And you could certainly use a smaller brush in these littler areas, but um, I'm going to bring this probably a little bit further down in through here. Just get this little area started with its darkness. There's a little dark area in through here. So this is just that little edge in through there. Over um, on these front edges of the boots, they have some stitching. I don't necessarily want to do a bunch of uh, the detail right now, but I definitely want to at least kind of start it. So I have my um, boot brown plus a touch of black on my brush, and I'm just kind of riding this along the this top edge in through here. We'll put uh, more detail to it 
in a little bit, but this again, just kind of getting me started where I want these dark areas to uh, to be. So again, just my my black plus my custom um, boot brown. I probably could have come up with a more interesting name for that color, but <laughs> it's working. So that's that's we all know what it is when I'm saying it. So that's we're just gonna roll with it. So just bringing this down in through here. And again, edges aren't to, uh, super perfect at this point. So I have a lot of darkness on the inside of this boot. I'm going to be using my black and my boot brown right now to get some pretty good darkness on, on the inside of this boot in through here. So pretty dark. I mean, you could, you could go as dark as you want. I'm going pretty dark. I'm going to um, add some burnt sienna on it in a minute, but this is giving me my tonal value. And you can, at any time you feel comfortable, you can start eliminating those, um, those guidelines. I'm going to bring this right to about the beginning, you know, right into before that uh, area in through here. So that looks good. I want this to be a gradual fade out into here. So I'm going to now pick up a little bit more of my boot brown. So just fading it out into the rest of the boot in through here. That looks pretty good. I've got a couple of dark areas in through here that I'm just going to use the remnants on my brush right now just to kind of it, tell me where I want them to go. These are going to be kind of like the, the little wrinkles that are going to be on top of the boots. Uh, that looks good in through there. I think I need just a little more darkness over here. And now I'm going to do the same thing on this boot, but where I need it on, on that boot. So I, again, I'm picking up my boot brown plus a touch of black. It looks like I have a pretty dark area kind of coming down this left side in through here, but it's not as large of an area as that one. So I'm just kind of riding it down in through here. There's a little darkness kind of coming in over here. And this is where if if you felt, let's say you're you're doing a rendition of a pair of boots that you own, you could certainly shape these whatever way is conducive to your set of boots. So I'm going with the foot pattern that was on this photo, but you could certainly do yours in whatever kind of formation that you want. Um, that can emulate your own boots. There's also a pretty dark area in through here, so I'm just kind of uh, marking it so I know where I'm headed with that. So over on this right-hand side, I do have a little bit of darkness, but not a ton, so I'm just gonna pick up um, my boot brown on my, on my dirty brush just to kind of get this a little bit darker over on this right-hand side, but not a lot. And the second coat is going to uh, help make sure I have full coverage on my boot. I am going to, like I said, going to add some additional color with the burnt sienna, but right now just kind of marking off where I want those dark areas to emerge. So that's looking pretty good. And I'm also going to be using my dark or my boot brown as a shadowy kind of color as well when I, as I build to the lightness. So that looks pretty good. The other thing that I'm seeing with the boots is that the the leather color is a little bit more richer and darker at the top of the boots as opposed to the bottom, as if the bottom is a little bit more worn. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up my burnt sienna and my um, boot brown to get that richness into the tone up at the top of these boots. So this is my burnt sienna plus brown. And this is uh, burnt umber, so this is giving me that um, almost more of a new look to the uh, leather up at the top of the boots, whereas down at the uh, base of the boot or the, the feet of the boot, it looks a little bit more worn and weathered. So this is going to allow me to get that transitional color um, from them being not so worn up at the top to being more worn down at the bottom. So this is looking pretty good in through here, just kind of allowing for myself to kind of um, just get it to blend down at this bottom. I'm going to do the same thing over on the right. So I'm going to pick up my, oh, I, I called it, I so it's 
burnt sienna and my boot brown. I made a mistake a second ago and said I used my burnt umber, but I wasn't. I'm using my burnt sienna plus my boot brown. So just making sure I clarify that because I just recalled that I made an error in, in what I said. <laughs> so, so right now I have my boot brown plus burnt sienna on my on my brush to get this rich tone to this to the leather more towards the top of the boot than the bottom so just getting this on here and again just kind of transitioning it over towards the uh, right feel like I want a little bit more burnt sienna over here again just watching the my photo and giving myself the option to keep those rich tones in um, in the top portion of the boot, which is what I'm seeing. <laughs> so something like this works out for me over here. Uh, on this left-hand side, we're gonna be transitioning in more towards that um, additional color. So this looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna start, I'm gonna bring myself down into the feet. I'm gonna be using my um, boot brown plus tan right now. So boot brown plus tan is gonna give me a light toe. So I'm going to put light toe right in through here and in through here. The light source that we're working on is over to the left. So the um, the shoes or the boots are going to have more highlight over on the left hand side of them. So as I'm going through this, I'm saying, OK, well, I, I want the toe to be lighter, at, but I also want this left hand side to be lighter as well. So I'm just going to kind of get that toe to be a little bit lighter. And now I can pick up, I'm looking at the, the photo and seeing where these light um, marks are kind of occurring on these toes. And also I'm going to do it in through here. So right now I'm adding these light marks in order to explain the form of the, um, of the boot. So there's uh, some lightness in through here. There's a light area on this left side of the um, foot, front part of the foot. I'm picking up a little bit more of my boot brown plus, um, plus my tan. I've got some light areas over here on the, on the left hand side of this boot. And those little creases that I had already put in place are now helping me to um, create more more dimension on, on these boots. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of burnt sienna in a minute, um, but I'm gonna do the same process on the other boot as well. So this is adding that lightness over on the left, and I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I've got the lightness, so again, this is tan, plus a little bit of my boot brown. I've got pretty light over in through here, and we're gonna be adding a shadow between these um, boots in a little bit, so that will also, uh, take care of any edges that might be a little bit difficult to see right now. There's a lot of lightness in through here and then we've got some in through here and here and coming up this side over here. So again this is, um, I've also got a big light area in through here too. That's kind of corresponding with this light area. So I'm really just looking at my photo and saying where am I seeing those lightest of light areas and it's on this left hand side to create these uh, these contours in the boots. Right now I, I need to start picking up my boot brown plus burnt sienna in order to give myself um, that leather color over on this right hand side. Um, and again, I will be doing another layer or another step with the final details to these boots, but this is gonna uh, get me started. I am going to pick up a little bit more burnt sienna. I feel like I need a little bit more of a yellowish tone in my burnt sienna. So I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of yellow with my burnt sienna just to give myself a little bit more of a um, golden type of a tone as opposed to the, um, the redness from the burnt sienna. So that worked out well. So I'm going to use burnt sienna plus a little bit of um, my yellow. And I'm going to do the same thing over on this side and through here. So this is giving the leather a little bit different of a tone than it is up at the top. So burnt sienna plus my yellow. So I'm not sure if I said I was going to use yellow in the beginning, but, but I am. So if you're keeping notes, that's the color I ended up using. And then I will definitely, um, I'm going to be doing a, probably another layer on these 
toes, I think we might have an, an additional step just so we can get um, the full detail of these. I was going to do just one step and then the final details, but I think it deserves um, another kind of layer, if you will. Um, at, you can see as I'm, as I'm doing this, I'm still kind of just adding some additional lightness over on this left-hand side because I feel as though the, um, the wrinkles and stuff um, will be benefited. Oops, I just picked up some of my beige color, but that's okay. Um, benefited a little bit if I add just a little bit more lightness. So as I'm, you know, as this is kind of drying and I'm seeing how these colors are um, playing off of one another, like I see in the toe, there's definitely, um, you know, I want there to be richness in in the in the leather but I also feel that there's some weatheredness to it so as you're as you're doing this it doesn't have to be just this smooth um, this smooth gradation you can kind of add a little bit of you know dotting if you will or a little bit of um, kind of streaking just whatever you feel is going to give you that weathered textural type of effect like we've there's lots of little wrinkles in, in here there's going to be there's some stitching in here too that will that will account for but as I'm going through the process I see that it's kind of darker on the toe and then it comes to lighter I am using some of my um, beige color too because I'm feeling like that's giving me a good um, pop of a highlight too so as you're going through it you know don't worry about it being a perfectly um, executed blend you can really kind of give it these this rough texture in order to make it look like these boots have really been worn and had you know a good time their whole life <laughs> I'm gonna pick up a little bit more of my boot brown just to kind of get this little dark area and you know you could really have fun exploring these uh, these different um, little values as you go through the boots uh, you know this is one of those textural um, elements that the more layers you put on it the more realistic the more realistic it's going to look i'm just watching for those wrinkles in the boots and uh, illuminating them with the um with the lightness from from the um from the different brown tones so i am going to on the next step um, I'm going to be doing the shadows behind the boots, but I think I'm going to do another um, step for these boot for the um, for the leather part on the boots as well. But we'll do that in in a in a future step. So when you've got this about to this stage, you can um, uh, we're going to use this brush for the next step as well. So you can wash and dry this need this uh, bright brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the shadow on the wall and on the floor. I'm gonna be using my number six bright brush. The colors I'm gonna use are probably just black and brown, and if I need to or want to go into any other colors, I will and I'll let you know. So what I wanna do is I just wanna darken some of the areas that are behind the boots in between the boots and maybe a little bit on the right hand side. Um, the photo reference that I'm using appears that there's different multiple light sources so I'm just gonna allow for a shadow to be in between the boots and a little bit on the right hand side um, and maybe a little bit on the floor there and under them. So the trick here for me is I'm not going to be using a ton of paint. I'm going to use black and brown and a little bit of water. So I'm just going to kind of thin it out. The darkest area um, that I am going to be tackling is going to be between the boots. So that's where I'm going to start. So if I, you know, am too dark or it'll just be a good place for me to start and kind of adjust what I want. So I have a thinned out black and brown mixture and I'm using it so it's transparent or translucent on that surface. So because we have um, different elements, you have here and here and here, I would tackle them independently. So that way if 
you, you can move that paint around, you can adjust it if you need to in that area. And because again, they're different elements, it'll be okay if the shadow looks different from here to here. So I'm gonna put a little bit more water on my brush to just kind of darken this area in through here. And because I'm using water, that's making my black brown mixture transparent, which is how it's allowing, it's um, just darkening the surface that it is on top of. So I think I want it a little bit darker up at the top, so I'm gonna pick up just a little bit more. And this will be uh, up to you how light or dark you want it to go. I am bumping into the boot because I want it to look um, like it's beside or underneath that boot. So that just helps me um, make sure that I have finished my shadow where I want it up here. I want it to kind of look like maybe the only a piece of um, the boot or the cat is um, shadowing the wall. So, and in the photo, it's only got the shadow kind of coming up to about here. So I'm gonna just take, uh, put a little bit more water on my brush and put a little bit of a shadow right in through here. And you could use a variety of different brushes to do this. It's gonna be wherever your comfort zone is. But again, the trick is just to make it look transparent so you can see through it. So it takes on the color that it is sitting on. So that looks pretty good in through there. Then over on the right hand side, I just really want it to be dissipated or um, just very minimal. So again, I just keep adding a little bit of water to my brush. You could use liquid medium, whatever you want or need to use to make it transparent is, is a, a preference on your part. And then I'm gonna come down this wall in through here. I think, I mean, it really just kind of disappears on this side of the boot on the um, photo. So I'm just gonna kind of let it fade off and into that area. So that looks pretty good. I'm gonna do the same thing right here with that same consistency because that seemed to work out pretty well for me. So I'm gonna bring this in through here right next to my boot like that and then just kind of let it fade off into that um, those floorboards so something like that looks good to me I can see that there's a shadow there it's pretty subtle but I can see it I also see a tiny little bit up here so I'm gonna add a little bit more water to my brush just to give myself just a little bitty little bitty shadow up in through here it looks like it's just kind of again let me just get my paper towel at the ready here so I can get this to just kind of fade off. And this is just a matter of learning to control the, um, the quantity of paint, the quantity of water on your brush to get those um, very subtle gradations or gradients um, to make it look like shadows and things of that nature. And I suppose you could, you know, put a little tiny bit over here, maybe a little bit of the cat's head is, you know, creating a little bit of a shadow on the wall up and through here. I just added a little bit more water to my brush. And then if anything goes wrong, just because you're using such a transparent paint, you can just keep adding water to your brush or you can take and just kind of wipe it away as it's, as it's drying or, you know, in the process of um, creating your shape. Looks pretty good. There we go, I like that, I think. <laughs> there we go, that works. And then I am gonna put a little bit underneath the, um, the boots down here, so a little bit more of that, um, that transparent black. I can put this a little bit more severe in through here if I want to just show that height of the boot in through here. But again, I'm not seeing it very dramatic in the, um, in the photo so if you felt you wanted that light source to have more of an effect and show a little bit more than I'm seeing it you could certainly make yours a little bit more and then once we've got this done we're going to use this same brush for the next step so you can just wash it and dry it and get ready 
All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is step three <laughs> to our leather boots. So I really, on the last step, I felt like I was gonna be able to get as much contour and wrinkles and stuff in it before I added the fine tune detail, but I feel we really should do another step to it. So I'm gonna be using my um, number six bright brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are Burnt Sienna, Beige, Tan, White, my boot brown, that chocolate brown, and maybe a little bit of burnt umber. And if I use any other colors, I'll let you know. <laughs> but in my head, I'm thinking that's all I'm gonna do, or those are the colors I'm gonna use. I really want this light source over on this left-hand side to have an effect on these boots, so I have to amp up these highlights on the left-hand side. So where I'm gonna first start is I'm gonna start with a little bit of burnt umber or excuse me, burnt sienna and a touch of white on my brush. So this is gonna cause almost like a light pinky type of a tone. I, I'm gonna put the, this really bright highlight in through here. I'm gonna let it kind of fade into the, um, the leathery portion of the, of the boot. Well, it's all a leathery portion, but you can put a little bit of water on your brush as you're, as you're kind of fading it away from that bright area because this is what's going to show those wrinkles in in the boot there's a there's a kind of a wrinkly area in through here so i'm just kind of pulling out what i have on my brush the little remnants because i used a touch of water on it too and allowing for these very light areas to to appear so i'm going to do that same color combination a little bit of burnt sienna plus a touch of white and just a very little bit on my brush i've got um some good highlights on um the uh the edge over in through here and i'm using both colors on my brush at the same time so i can get this um, really cool kind of gradation as uh, as i go through the process and it allows me to have multiple kind of tonal values in it, but allows me still to um, have a similar tone to it, but um, allows, you know, maybe one little piece is gonna be a touch brighter than the other. So that looks pretty good. As I come down this left-hand side, I still want it to be pretty light over here, but maybe instead of uh, burnt sienna and white, maybe I use a little burnt sienna plus my beige. So this will give me a little bit more of a yellowy type of a um, hue to this highlight color. So as you go through your process, know that you know it's okay for these tones to to shift and change a little bit as they're as they're coming down in through here. I feel like there's a little bit of a lightness here. I'm gonna pick up a little bit more burnt sienna. And anytime you feel it's too pink or it's going a little bit you know skewed in an unusual direction, revert to that um, that chocolate brown or that boot brown that we had created initially. So that's so, showing some pretty good highlight over here. I'm gonna pick up some of that boot brown just to um, make sure that I've got a little bit of definition between these two guys and through here. And then over on that right hand side, it's pretty darn dark. So I'm gonna just allow it to stay dark over in through there. Um, I've got more lightness I wanna account for over here. So again, burnt sienna plus a touch of white I've got this in through here, but I feel like I want a little bit um, more. I don't necessarily want it to go as bright as this one, but I definitely want a little bit in through here to emulate what I'm seeing in the in the picture. I do know as I'm coming down here, I, by what I see in the picture, I want my boot to be a little bit lighter than this background. So I either need to lighten my boot or darken this piece of wood. So I'm going to opt to lighten my boot. So I'm going with some... Uh, beige and my um, burnt sienna. So just gonna lighten this up in through here. There's a little bump out in through there. And then I'm just gonna kind of ride this down this whole side of the boot because it seems to be pretty darn light in through here. And then I can just kind of pull this lightness into some wrinkles. This whole side of the boot is pretty darn light. So I'm, I'm, I'm being bold. I'm going for my, for my, um, my beige color, and if I need to darken it later, I, I can certainly and easily do that, but right now I'm feeling like this is definitely the right color to be to be using, and then I'm just gonna kind of 
pull it up and pull it over. We need this, definitely want this to be lighter too. So I'm gonna put a little bit in through here. And of course you could be using a different brush too. So I like to use um, different brushes for different things, but um, I also like to learn and to test myself using um, a, an unusual brush for something that I wouldn't normally do. So I might, in most circumstances, use a um, like a small bristle brush to do something like this. But today I, I wanted to use a bright brush. Perhaps I could be using a smaller bright brush than what I'm using. But I like to just kind of play with a, a similar tool um, to a, it, with mo doing multiple tasks with it. So that way I can allow myself the freedom to not be reliant upon one specific tool. So I'm picking up a, again more beige plus my um, burnt sienna. I don't know why I'm having trouble telling you what colors I'm using today. <laughs> They're just not coming out my brain properly. Um, I've got lots of lightness in through here just on these little wrinkles and through here. This is looking good. Now I'm gonna pick up a little bit, I wipe my brush off. I'm picking up a little bit of burnt sienna and yellow. I'm not sure I said I was gonna use yellow, but I'm feeling like I like these tones over here on this right hand side. So I just needed a little bit more um, yellow in through there to help keep them in that in that um, kind of orangey type of value in through there. Same thing with on this toe. So I'm picking up some burnt sienna and yellow on my brush, on my dirty brush to uh, get that to happen. That might be a little bit too light. So we're gonna go a little bit of my chocolate brown in through here. So that was my boot brown. And what I'm seeing in the picture is that the left side of this toe is a little bit lighter. So that's why I kind of almost split it down the middle like that. Um, picking up a little bit more of my beige and my chocolate brown, my boot brown, just to get this toe just a little bit lighter in through here. And of course, you you might find that you want yours lighter or darker, but for me, I really wanted that contrast to show um, from that light source. So that's why I'm opting to really, you know, amp up this lightness. I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of white right now to um, accentuate this little area right in through here. And that's gonna, again, add that little extra bit of power to my light source, a little bit in through here. And once we add all the little decorative elements as well, that will help to, um, you know, illuminate this even more and give it a little bit more definition. But I'm digging the way it's coming out right now. I just picked up a little bit more of my burnt umber. So I feel this little section in through here needs to not be so dark. So just with the remnants on my brush kind of allowed for that to have a little bit of a transition. And that's looking much better to me than it was before. So I'm digging that. Um, and then just maybe a little bit more of the yellow and burnt sienna right in through here just to kind of allow for uh, another coat, making sure that that has its color on it. And then as you're going through this, just you know, allowing for to make sure one side is similar to the other. So whatever you kind of did on this left-hand side, you'll want to carry through, I'm washing my brush, you'll want to carry through over onto the right-hand side. But I'm picking up a little bit more of my boot brown in through here just to, uh, that yellow was a little bit too yellow, so just dulling it down. And then a little bit more burnt sienna, because I feel this can, it can get a, a little bit more amping up of these tones in through here and to account for some of the wrinkles in through there as well. And then I'll go ahead and do the other boot in a similar manner. That looks pretty good. And you know, again, I'd probably let it dry and see if, you know, if there was any additional um, tones I wanted to add, but I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I'm gonna start with um, burnt sienna plus a touch of white on my brush give myself similar little, um, uh, these little um, divots, that's not what they're called, oh, seams, from where they're, they're sewn in through here. So there's one in through here as well. And they go up the other side too, but um, I didn't do it here. Let's just kind of get just a little bit of a light one. Not as dramatic because it's in the shadow, so I'm hardly touching my canvas to accomplish it. <laughs> 
So that looks good in through there. And again, you might not want to take yours as far as I'm taking mine. You could certainly use a more um, painterly approach where you're just allowing for, you know, maybe you just want to have the shapes right, but you don't necessarily want to have all the definition in um, in the wrinkles and stuff. So I'm putting, I put more, oh, there's kind of a similar, well, to here, there's one over here. So we're going to do this one here first because I'm seeing that one first. I like to kind of also when I'm doing stuff like this, if I'm having difficulty kind of um, figuring out where things are, sometimes I, I can just kind of look from one boot to the next and say, okay, well, I did it here. So it's probably in a similar place over on the other boot, um, especially when you're doing pretty symmetrical objects like this. But again, I'm not taking mine all the way to photorealism. I'm just really looking to have a similar likeness in it. I think what I liked most about this painting or this composition was the cute little kittens. <laughs> so those are going to be my focal point when I get, when I get to them. Um, they're going to really steal the show. But I did want to, um, you know, show you guys how to get this kind of real textural effect on these old kind of weathered uh, cowboy boots so you can if you it's it's a fun thing to learn how to paint you could use this um, this demonstration for emulating a leather coat or a leather bag or you know anything that has this really um, multi-toned textural it's kind of a soft textural element but it's definitely you know it bumps out where it's where it's lighter and it's got all of these different um tones based on if it's an older part of the boot or a part of the boot that gets more use on it so you can use this you know thought process as you as you develop you know any kind of leather type of object or something that wears differently from one area to another i feel like i need a little bit more lightness in through here so while i've got that lighter tone on my brush i'm using a scumbling effect right now where i'm just rubbing it on um on the boot with the remnants on my brush just so I can um, get a little bit of a gradient in through here but not um, having to having to reload my brush with a bunch of different colors so that looks pretty good I need a tackle over here again so I'm going burnt sienna with a little bit of yellow because that's what I was doing over on this side and through here I just really want to keep it um, nice and dark I'm feeling like I need a um, amp up this little wrinkle on this side so just putting my burnt sienna and yellow like that and going to come up this side and again I'm using my dirty brush so if I if I come to an area and I'm like oh I like the color that's on my brush I can use it over here I'll just move and use it over on that other side and then coming up here there's a little bit of a um, dip right in through here in the boot and again, just allowing to sh uh, show where these areas kind of are darker, that's, going, that's telling the contour, that's explaining the contour of not only the foot <laughs> that resides in this boot or that uses this boot a lot, but it just helps to explain to the viewer how all of these, you know, wrinkles and stuff are, are forming this type of material because not a lot of materials can do this but we know that leather can do this so that's allowing um, to explain what type of material it is that we're trying to emulate as well I feel like I need a little bit more lightness on these guys in through here and I'm feeling like that's pretty pretty good I might let it dry and if I feel that I want to add a little bit more like I definitely want just a little bit more on this toe in through here um, if I feel I want a little bit more before I put my final details on, I might do that, but I, I need to see it from a distance first. This sitting up like this close is a little a little difficult for me, but um, we're gonna we're gonna see. Oh, ooh, I like these little there's little um, divots on the side right in through here too. Just being able to see these little kind of nuances will help you make it look a little bit more realistic. But again, it's how far do you want to take it? How much detail do you want to put into it? And I'm thinking that, you know, we our kittens are going to be, are going to steal a little bit of this, a little bit of this show. So we're going to, I think I'm going to kind of call it 
at this point and then I'm gonna wash and dry um, I say I'm gonna call it but I'm adding more paint um, I, I'm gonna wash and dry no I'm gonna use my small detail brush my number not my tiny one I'm gonna use my um, my number three brush my number three round for the next step so once you've got this done you can make any little fiddling adjustments that you feel would benefit you and then you can put this brush away take out uh, a small round as I just keep fiddling away take out a small round and get ready for the next step all right so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the final details on the boots I'm using my number three round brush the colors I'm gonna use are black beige white and maybe a little bit of my um, boot brown as well so what I'm gonna do is I just want to look around I'm gonna be finishing up these two little pieces up in through here I'm gonna finish the little soles of the boots there's a uh, there's a stitching that goes around them and then there's a decorative um, I think it's like a embossed type of um, design on the leather so we're gonna put that in as well so I'm gonna tackle the um, soles first what I'm gonna do it I think I told you the colors I'm using black white beige um, maybe some brown and maybe a little bit of my boot brown or burnt sienna so I'm gonna start <laughs> with black and white on my brush because I want to put a little bit of detail on these um, on the black sole part so I've got black and white on my brush and I'm going to bring this across and I'm going to add a, a little illusion of um, some buckled type of um, leather down at the on the sole so I just am bringing down these little gray um, uh, we call it I guess we can call it a streaky and then in through here just going to allow for this to just kind of fade out it looks like it's just all weathered down in through here so I'm just trying to give it that illusion so I'll do the same thing on the other shoe so again just a little bit of black and white on my brush I don't see as much of this detail on this one so I'm just going to go for a nice there's a good highlight right in through here and then I can just kind of fade it out into the black nearing it. So nothing much on this one, it looks like. Uh, and then it looks pretty good. I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of white just to give a little pop right there and right in through here. So now there's a little, there's a stitching that goes around these soles. So I'm going to pick up some of my beige color and put the stitching in <laughs> so I'm gonna just kind of um, I'm gonna start over here just with these little small ones over in through here this might end up being too bright of a color but I can always uh, dull it down with a little bit of a wash or something on top of it so I'm just kind of getting it in here so I know where I want these little marks to go that's looking pretty good. I'm going to do the same thing over on the other boot. So it's pretty prevalent right at kind of on this side in through here. And it looks like it's kind of smaller on the edges and then gets wider as it's in the front of the boot, something like this. Um, but you could, of course, you know, these little nuances are not necessary to you know always accomplish but again if you're if you're looking to learn how to paint you know realistic effects trying to get everything in that you can will will help the process i feel like i want a little bit more shadow in between these boots too i'm washing and drying my brush i'm going to pick up a little bit more um black on my brush just to kind of get a little a little bit more darkness in between here just to account for that um boot maybe shadowing could even shadow the the neighboring boot so something like that just didn't feel like it was dark enough for me so that looks pretty good and if you felt like you needed to do anything else on the stitching you could pick up a little bit of brown and or black just to 
make sure that you've got um, a little bit of darkness above them to make them look like they're kind of um, almost puckering the leather of the, the boot. If you wanted to add that effect, that's great. If not, no worries. And then I'm going to um, move on to the other dark areas up at the top that I feel um, would definitely benefit from some additional details. So I'm going to go up to the top. I've got black on my brush. I'm going to put a little black uh, detail underneath this strap. So something like this is going to give me that, that neat detail. And as I come down this side of the boot right in through here, if I want to reshape the edge of this boot, I can use this black to do that. So if I feel that this would bump in a little bit, I can use the shadow from that back piece to create um, a, a different profile on the side of the boot. Uh, I'm picking up just a little bit more black. I feel like this needs to come down even farther. So I'm going to bring this down um, maybe to about here. So I'm just going to bring this nice dark line down right to about here. And then I'm going to pick up a little bit of my boot brown. <laughs> so on my dirty brush and just kind of put a little exterior edge on that. So that'll look like that piece in through there. I'm going to wash and dry my brush. I'm going to pick up a little bit more black because I had just picked up my boot brown there. And I'm going to um, do the same thing over here. So I'm going to bring this little detail. I'm going to put some black in through here. And then I'm going to bring this again. I feel like on this one, it, it comes down a bit farther than I've had than I have it coming down. So I'm going to just cross it over this other boot, which is totally fine. I'm going to bring that in through there, cross it over this other boot. I'm putting a little bit of water on my brush. So as I come down into here, I've got, and then I'm just going to give it a little, little little tiny bump out in through there and I'm going to pick up some of my boot brown just to give myself that that edge of this piece in through here and you can totally cross it over the other boot. I'm now going to wash and dry my brush. Just pull that down just a little bit further um, and do the tops of these guys in through here. So I'm going to pick up, um, I think I'm going to go with mm, burnt sienna and white. So burnt sienna and white, just to give myself a bright kind of top to these little guys in through here. And again, it doesn't, you don't have to go for the same exact color as I'm going for. I'm just going for something that is going to resemble the rest of the boot um, to give myself a little highlight over on this left hand side. And that's about all I'm going to do with that. You can certainly, you know, make any little adjustments that you feel are necessary. I do need to finish this little piece here. So I'm just going to, I wipe my brush off. I'm picking up some of my boot brown just to kind of f close this off. Um, the wall might have been seen behind there, but I'm going to have kitten fur <laughs> that's going to kind of um, overlap this. So I just want to get, a, make sure that it's finished being painted. That looks pretty good. Same thing with over here. I'm going to pick up a little burnt sienna and white just to um, make sure that I have a little bit of a detail over in through there. That looks good. So now I'm going to start adding my little um, design to the to the boot. So for me, when I'm trying to emulate one for one, granted, these are pretty wrinkled. So we've got a lot of liberty <laughs> to to, um, to digest and, and to make you know, things not exactly perfect. But when I'm looking at the photo versus here, I'm just going to try and give myself a couple of key points and dots, and then I can create the design around that. So I'm going to use my, um, my beige to do this, and I'm going to use it with water. So the water is going to help me with my fluidity, but it's also going to make it a little transparent. So when I'm on the lighter side of the boot, my my design will be lighter than it is on the darker side because it will take on the color that's underneath it. So that's where I'm going to be utilizing that um, the water to my advantage. So I'm seeing a couple of key points on the design element. I'm going to come down from this um, V about an inch, give myself a little bit of a marker, and I'm going to just make a bunch of markers right now, and then I will um, go from there. So a couple of little 
dots in through here. I'm also seeing in this center area. And again, the boots are a little bit um, crooked from one another. So I'm seeing the next design element kind of starts in through here. I've got a little point going on in through there. And then when I come down to the toe, I've got um, like these little pointy designs coming. So this one, it ends up right about in through here. And then this one ends up right about here. So they're kind of it turned in into the um, into the viewer like this. So now that I've got those key points, creating my design is a little bit easier because I've got a place to shoot for or I've got a place to start. And then I can just kind of work off of that. So when I'm doing the top design element, I know I can't come below this. It's got to just encompass that portion up and same thing with here. And then the second element is going to incorporate, you know, encompass you know, however far down it needs to go in here. And it just keeps me in check. So I'm going to start up on this one here and I'm going to do this uh, center little element like this. And I'm just going to kind of watch my, watch my photo and allow for um, this to be a little carefree. I don't need it one for one to the photo. That's going to be a personal preference on your part. Um, because this is a worn uh, boot from one side to the other is definitely I'm seeing a difference um, from for the wrinkles in the um, in the boot so I'm just going to kind of emulate from one side to the other and again I'm using a faint color right now um, it as as it dries if I want to make it brighter or um, add more color to it. I certainly can, but when I'm doing these kind of graphic elements like this, where I know it can really easily um, become either complicated or um, you know difficult, I guess is a is another good word to use. I try and keep my process as simple as possible, so that way um, I have a little bit more. Um, kind of shot <laughs> at getting it the way that I want. So, it, you know, as you're going through your process, you might find that, you know, a different way to approach it helps you with your painting um, style a little bit better. So I came down here knowing that this is um, kind of my center element that's going to kind of merge in with here. So I'm watching where it's going on my photo and now I want to kind of connect here to here because I feel like if I go too much farther down here I might lose um, lose where I want to go here. So something like this and then there's like these little leaf things down in through here or pointy things and then it meets this guy over here. And again going from one side to the other that's going to be um, you know up to you if you want to do this section and then that section, it, you know, keeping yourself kind of it, along the same line uh, from one side to the other. For me, sometimes that, that helps out. Um, but again, it's going to be what works best for you. You know, what, what does your brain allow you to do and what does it not allow you to do? So you can um, really explore your line making ability when it comes to stuff like this and maybe you need a smaller brush or maybe you like a different kind of brush to to create these kind of effects so again up to you whatever um, process works for you We've got a big long one up and through here and again because this is leather um, material that we're emulating it's it's okay if you know one piece doesn't look exactly symmetrical with the other piece. Uh, this goes, this is going to come down mm, past here. Just making sure I don't, because there's a little, this is a wrinkly side of the, of the boot. It kind of just comes down in through here. I'm thinking something like that. Okay, that works for me. So that's the equivalent of that, but in a wrinklier side of the boot. And that's, you know, another thing that can really get confusing is, you, especially on this type of material, one side of the boot looks one way and you think it should be exactly that way on the other boot, but because of all of the wrinkles and all the other um, elements involved on the other side, it's 
gonna look different or it can potentially look different. So just, you know, mentally prepare for that. <laughs> those kind of things that, you know, can really throw you for a loop if you're not, um, you know, used to doing this kind of stuff. So this kind of comes down here and then this is gonna come off and into the distance like that. So we'll do that on this side as well, but it's a little more skewed because of the way the boot is going. So we've got that. And you know, something like this can be very fun to do very or very tedious, or that was a little bit too much. So I'm just rubbing it away with my brush. Um, and some people love to do line work, some don't. Um, I am one who loves to do it. Sometimes I like to take a little bit more time um, to do it than I'm than I'm showing you here, but that's a um, you know how up to you how much time you want to spend on certain uh, elements. So this is mm, we're gonna go something like this. Of course, I'm trying to watch that photo, but it's so different from one side to the other. So, you know, you just kind of roll with it. And if you want to make changes after you've, you know, come through it. So this has one, two, three, so something like this. And you can always bring back some of those other colors as well. So I think this might have a little scoop of that going up there. Let me tackle this piece over here. And I can also, while I'm here, while I've got this lighter color on my brush, if I feel that it would benefit me to just kind of put some little light streaks on the top of that, that rim, that works too. Uh, let's see, this is gonna come somewhere over in through here. Mm, we've got this and this <laughs> and this one. And then this one kind of comes up like this. And you can see I'm using a very sketcherly kind of approach to this. So if it does, you know, if I do feel like I want to adjust um, any of these marks, I can incorporate them into that background leather in a simpler fashion because I'm really not using super hard lines here. I'm trying to keep it as sketchily as possible to avoid, um, you know, the, or to help me if I, if I am, you know, make any, any mistakes along the way. Um, of course you could draw it out too. You could certainly, um, plan this much more, um, you know, fully when it comes to stuff like that. You could even trace the design on. Um, let's see. So we've done that. We've done that. All right. So we're going, there's a little bit of a dark area in through here. I'm actually gonna, I'm washing white, washing my brush. I'm gonna pick up some brown burnt umber because there's a dark area in through here, a dark seam that I want to um, account for. And let's see, it comes somewhere around here and it kind of wraps around like this. It looks like a little shadowy kind of um, decorative seam in the in the boot so again I'm just kind of using a, a soft edge I am gonna put a little it looks like there's a little highlight of sorts around it so we'll start with the dark and then make our way to the light so over here and again I'm just going with what the the seams are or the decorative uh, elements of this particular boot but you could be um, doing your own boots, <laughs> you know, that would be super fun. So that looks pretty good. I'm gonna come back and do a little highlight on that section in a minute, but while that's drying, I'm gonna come down and do these bottom ones. So again, just my watered down beige. So we made the tip in through here. So for this, this particular one, it kind of comes in a um, oval, like almond type of a shape. And then there's a little skinny almond or point, we'll call it a pointy oval, which I guess is an almond shape, right? So something like that. There's um, a couple of little additional marks in through here. And again, it's up to you how, how detailed you want this to go. You might want yours to have, I think I want a little bit more of my burnt sienna with this color. Um, just kind of applying little bits of highlights in through there. So again, my tip is right here that I marked off. So I'm gonna do my oval almond type of shape and then there's 
um, these other ones in through here. The ones on the feet or the toes seem to be much more worn or very, uh, they're less visible than the ones up top. So I'm probably going to dull these down with uh, or get them to kind of um, merge into the color, the other colors a little bit more in a minute, but just kind of getting everything in place. This, I really like this highlight here. I feel like I want to enhance it, so I'll do that. And then um, that looks pretty good. Let me go hit this with a little highlight. So again, still just my watered down. Um, I'm going to use actually burnt sienna and my watered down beige. So burnt sienna and my watered down beige, just to give myself this little uh, highlight around this guy in through here. And again, this is just looks like it's a kind of a section that um, is popping out of the boot or, you know, again, embossed or something like that. So I'll do the same thing on the other burnt sienna plus a little bit of my beige and I see it on the, on the boot. So I'm just going to kind of emulate it a little bit. That looks pretty good. There's a little extra highlight in through here. So maybe just a little bit more of my burnt sienna or my beige in through here just to get that to pop out just a little bit more. That looks pretty good. And then um, down in through here, this is too much for me. So I'm going to pick up some of my burnt sienna and my beige just to kind of dull this down a little bit in through here. So maybe a little bit more burnt sienna than that. And just kind of get it to kind of fade into that boot a little bit more. Yeah, that, that makes me happier. <laughs> that was oh, it's too much for me. Same thing right here, just kind of dull it down a little bit. There we go. And then you can certainly make any little fiddling adjustments that you want. If you want, um, I'm picking up some of my boot brown right now. If you want these to be more, you know, yellow, or I just picked up a little bit of yellow with my beige, you could certainly enhance these as in whatever way that you want that it's going to be totally up to you you can make them lighter or darker or i'm just enhancing a little bit on this left hand side with my yellow and my beige and then we're going to use our um we're going to use our small brush the number one round for the next step so once you've got this done make any little fiddling adjustments that will benefit you and you can put this brush away take out your small round and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint some facial features i'm going to use my small round i think i called it a number one round when i was closing out the last step it's a number zero round <laughs> so i'm going to be painting some eyes noses and mouths i'm going to be using this small brush with black white, red, brown, the burnt umber. Um, and I'm also going to use that custom sage green that we created as well. I'm going to start by putting the features in place with um, a little bit of watered down black paint. So I'm going to stick a little bit of water in my black paint so it's like an ink consistency. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to find I think I'm going to do this right one first. So if I find myself about halfway between these two ears and come down um, almost maybe just a little bit higher than the top of the boot, somewhere in through here, I'm going to go, um, or it might be right about the top, I'm going to go a little bit to the right of, so this is the center in through here, I'm going to touch to the right, I'm going to make myself a dot, and then I'm going to go about an inch to the left, make myself another dot. These will be the inside corners of the eyes. I'm going to then give myself a small curved line for the bottom that's almost maybe about three quarters of an inch wide. Do the same thing over on the other side like that. And then I'm going to give myself two uh, round toppers to the eyes. So something like this will give me my top and do the same thing over on the other side give me my top and then I'm just going to color these in with black paint. So because I'm using a thin thinned out black paint, you're probably going to be able to see a little bit um, transparency to it, but 
I'm okay with that. I just want this to be a nice thin coat so it dries pretty quickly. I'm also going to soften the edges of my eyes so so I don't have a super firm line while my while I have the remnants on my brush I can just kind of um, go right around those edges just give myself a little bit of softness around those eyes so they're not um, just a solid uh, color so that looks pretty good I'm gonna um, then go do the same thing to the other cat so for this one this cat's face is down a little bit and this cat's face is up a little bit <laughs> so these eyes it's gonna have a larger section um, in the forehead so again find myself about the center of the ears and if I travel straight down from that my head is a little bit tipped I can actually find myself right at the corner of um, our left the eye on the left and then I'm gonna go to the right of that about almost an inch and then up just a smudge so I've got these below the top of the boot so just so you know how far down they are and then I can do the same thing with giving that little uh, curved line for the bottom part the bottom portion of the eye something like this and then these ones look a little bit more round compared to those ones so I'm dipping that that bottom edge down a little bit further and then I'll give uh, from that corner of the eye, I'm gonna give a upward kind of circle. From the corner of the eye, give an upward kind of circle. And you just want them to be similar in size. They don't have to be exactly the same, but similar works. And then I'm just gonna color them in with my black paint. And then while these are drying, I'm gonna go work on my noses and my mouths. And again, just kind of giving myself a light a uh, soft edge to the exterior of those eyes and do the same thing over in through here. So again, just thinned out black paint. And then when I get to those edges, just kind of dust my brush along so I can have just a little bit of a soft edge in through there. So I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna put some brown paint on it. So burnt umber. And again, just a little water in it will give you a nice kind of thinned out version. I'm going to come, it doesn't really matter which one you start with, so I'll start with this one over here. So again, my cat, this cat is tipped a little bit, so I'm going to find myself a little, uh, the center of the eyes, and then come to the left, just a smudge, and then I'm going to come down, I would say maybe about a quarter to a half of an inch, somewhere in through here. This is going to be the top of the nose. I'm gonna come down from that, maybe about another half of an inch, that'll be the bottom of it. And then I'm just gonna give myself kind of a little curve like this. The bottom part of cat's noses usually kind of looks like a little V, so I'll do that. And then I'm just coloring it in, again, with a very thinned out version of um, my brown paint. I kind of went outside my line there, so I wiped it away quickly with my uh, finger. Then I'm gonna take a little bit more brown, bring it down here like that, and then just give that little mouth kind of like an upside down um, little V. And you can bring this, I would say out maybe just a little bit past the corners of the eyes in through there. And you could even just kind of soften this line so it's not a super harsh line, just a dark line in through there. I'm gonna do the same thing for my other cat. So find myself the center uh, between those eyes. I think I had a little bit of white on my brush there. The center between those eyes. Um, so somewhere in through here. And this one is gonna be maybe about uh, three quarters of an inch below that. So somewhere in this vicinity is where I'm gonna give my little curved line like that and then just bring it down in a V. Again, we're seeing this one at a little bit different of an angle. So it's a little bit more um, squatty of a nose and then a little kind of uh, bring down there, bring these two down in through here and then just kind of soften this up a little bit so it's not just a firm line. So now that I've got that done, I'm gonna go ahead and finish the eyes. I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna go to these eyes first I'm going to be using um, my um, sage green color. You could, of course, make these any color that you want. In the photo, I think they're kind of like similar color to the wall. They might have a little bit more blue in them, but I'm going to start with this color, and if I decide to go into another color, I certainly will. So I'm going to bring 
just these light portions to the eyes um, along the side. That's probably going to be too light for me. So I'm going to probably darken it up in a second here, but I'm going to do this for um, both eyes, just kind of giving myself a little around the bout, leaving a lot of that um, pupil showing. That looks good. I'm going to do the same thing on the other eye, so I have similar, because they are pretty similar in the um, in the photo. I'm leaving some of that darkness around the edge of the eye. These cats' eyes are pretty wide open. <laughs> I don't know if they're surprised or excited, especially this one on the left. His eyes are really wide open, so we're gonna we're gonna put some big colored parts to his eyes. Um, but again, I don't have a lot of oops, I keep getting I don't have a lot of paint on my brush, just allowing for myself to have this nice kind of sketcherly um, color here for these big pupils. Um, I am gonna add a little bit more darkness to this color, so I'm just gonna add a little bit of. Uh, blue and yellow into my sage so it's just a little bit darker for me so I can have some um, some actual color in the eye so I just made a little bit darker of a version and again you could have your color whatever um, shade you want the, these cats um, we're just going to give them these pretty light bluish green eyes in through here and then just adding a little bit more of that color to these guys and through here I've got to um, uh, put another layer on those pupils so I'm going to wash and dry my brush because the pupils are not fully executed right now so I wash and dry my brush picked up a little bit more black make sure that I've got this um, colored in as much as I want and if I have any exterior um, areas around the eyes that I want to soften with that black I can certainly do that putting a little making this pupil look as big as the other one. So I think for me the trick when I'm doing eyes is I I want them to look nice and natural but they in order to do that they've got to have lots of kind of uh, gradients or different values in them so like these guys in through here usually you'll find a shadow underneath the eyelid so if you take and just put a little bit of a darker tone right up there at the top that's going to give it a you know a great effect you can also put your um, shiny sparkly areas but I feel like I need another layer to the colored part of the eye because it's looking a little a little um, dull so I'm just kind of adding just a little extra color in through in through here so that was just another layer so now I'm going to put a little highlight on these eyes I'm going to use um, am I going to use here? I'm going to actually use my beige color as my highlight. I didn't say I was going to use that. I'm using my beige and I'm just going to kind of go across the eyelid or the um, the colored part of the eye and the pupil just a little bit with this beige and my black is still a little bit wet underneath which is totally fine so you can really have fun with um, these reflections of sorts. It looks like there's another little reflection over here so I'm just kind of following what I see in the picture. There's little reflections all over because I think we're, earlier I said something about there being multiple light sources and these eyes are, are confirming that <laughs> there's multiple reflections. Now I'm going into white and just going to put an additional little sparkle. I'm going to put the little sparkle up and through here. This is a more dramatic sparkle than there is in the photograph, but I feel this, these little kitties, they need their little sparkles in their eyes. So we're going for a little bit more of a sparkle than we, than we see in the photograph. So something like that and like this. And then I'm gonna go ahead and finish those noses. I'm washing and drying my brush. This guy over here has got a cute little pink nose. So I'm gonna make a pink color with red and white. I'm gonna be using this pink later in the ears or uh, yeah, in the ears. So whatever you make just make a little extra for later so a little bit of red and white is going to make me a pink tone I'm going to uh, stick this at the top of this nose and just get this to kind of fade out into um, that fur I'm also going to put a little bit of this oops, down uh, by the cheeky areas right in through here and maybe a little bit on the top of that bottom lip area I'm going to pick up a little bit more red with my pink right now. So I have red and pink on my brush to get this a little bit darker down at the bottom side of the nose. So a little bit of red and pink is giving me a little bit darker of a tone. 
And then I'm gonna pick up, just get this little, I'm kind of outlining my nostrils right now. <laughs> I'm gonna pick up a little bit of uh, brown, wiping my brush off, picking up a little bit of brown, give little darker nostrils in through here little tiny dark nostril in through there and then a little darker line. So the first time I used the brown, it was thinned out and um, it became transparent, which is great because it gives me these different values in it. And now I just used it on its own and it made it a little bit darker. I just picked up a little bit more uh, red with a touch of brown on my brush just to get the bottom of this nose a little bit darker as it's meeting that little uh, indent place before the mouth there we go and this guy over here he's got a brown nose so i'm going to wash and dry my brush i'm going to pick up a little bit of my burnt umber to get uh this inside darker we've got some little dark spots up in through here which are probably his nostrils in through there and then this little area underneath is dark his little mouth gets a little bit darker in through there and then he doesn't really need much more on his nose I'm going to pick up um, a little bit of my tan, so just a tiny bit of my tan, just to give a little lightness on that nose in through there. And I think that's all I need to do for his for his nose. Um, we're going to be using our, uh, and I don't really need to do anything around his mouth. If you felt you wanted a little pink, you could pick up a little bit of pink and just put it like at the bottom of his little cheeks in through here, but I don't think that's totally necessary. And then we're going to use our number three round brush for the next step. So you can put this one away, take out the number three round and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the fur on the light cat or the, our right cat. <laughs> I'm gonna use my number three round. The colors I'm gonna use are brown, that's the burnt umber, um, beige, white, pink, and burnt sienna. And how I'm gonna approach this is I'm gonna put my dark areas in first. So I need to um, put dark fur down where it's kind of tucked into the boot. We're gonna put some dark fur where it's kind of tucked into the sides of the boot. I'll put some pink in the ears and then um, some little white on the cheeks. And we'll just fill in the rest with some of our um, beige and maybe a little bit of burnt umber to give it um, some different tones. So I'm gonna start with just brown and get my dark areas in place. So I definitely wanna have his neck kind of defined, well, his or hers, I don't know if it's a male or a female cat. So I'm just gonna kind of put some dark area in through here and just kind of rub it out to define where I want that neck to go. So that's looking pretty good. The little fur down in the um, boot, I'm gonna put some pretty dark areas because um, this cat looks like it's got kind of longer fur so these little pockets of dark spots are going to make it look like it's um, kind of fluffy. I'm going to pick up a little bit more of my brown. That's looking pretty good over here. I need a little bit in this area here because his face is kind of squashed <laughs> so we're going to put a little bit of brown over in through here. Uh, around his mouth. I don't need much, but maybe some on the insides of the eyes and through here. So just a little bit of brown coming in through here, maybe towards that nose. That's going to give you that uh, the shape of the nose. That one was probably a little bit more towards there. Um, and then there's, I'm seeing some uh, like burnt sienna type of tones throughout his fur too. So I just wiped my brush off and picking up just a little bit of burnt sienna. It's almost as if where these shadowy areas come out um, into the fur a little bit they, or into the lighter areas of the fur, they look a little bit more burnt sienna to me. So I'm picking up just a little bit of that on my dirty brush. So it's allowing for these different um, variations of the color to emerge. So that looks pretty good. Maybe a little bit more of this burnt sienna. I did wash my brush just now. A little bit more burnt sienna around these eyes. I'm feeling like there's kind of almost a um, reddish type of tone around the eyes. There's actually a little marking over on this guy in through here that kind of comes down in through here. So very subtle. This is a light colored um, cat. So 
you're not going to need to put much detail in the color variations, but these little subtle nuances will definitely help to um, to sell the story. I'm going to just kind of rub on a little bit of this burnt sienna in through here and in through here. That's going to get that to emerge as a nice uh, color variation. I'm putting a little bit of this burnt sienna up in these um, this area above the eyes too, somewhere in through there. There's a little bit in through here. I'll get them to go a little bit lighter in a minute as well, but this is just kind of, again, setting the stage, just rubbing this on to give these little different tones throughout the throughout the fur. So that looks pretty good. Well, that's kind of settling for a minute here. Oh, I have a little shadow on the face over here too. So just a little bit more of that burnt sienna. It's kind of rubbing it on here right towards that mouth. There we go. A little bit under here. There we go. So now I'm going to go into those ears. I'm going to pick up some of my pink and I'm going to put some pink in these ears because they're so cute. <laughs> they've, got, they've got little little pink hues to match what's going on on that little pink nose. So just a little bit of pink in through here. And to give it a little bit of depth, I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of burnt sienna, right? To put the burnt sienna where it goes into the head or where that ear kind of goes into the, uh, the the head. So just something like that. A little bit of burnt sienna, turning that pink just a little bit darker as it goes into the head. So now I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna just build my light colors. So it's gonna be with my beige and possibly a little bit of white or beige plus burnt sienna, but I'm gonna start with beige and burnt sienna on my brush to give me just a little bit in through here and this is where I'm gonna um, instead of rubbing my brush I'm more kind of tapping it this is going to give me a, a textural effect to the um, to the fur so this is my beige plus um, some burnt sienna to get down in these little hairs uh, that are hiding in the boot <laughs> and just kind of tapping it so I can get a little bit of texture in through there but I don't I, again I don't need much just something that's gonna allow for it to look like he's super cute and snuggled into there um, I feel like I want just a little bit more burnt sienna down here just to kind of get that a little bit deeper in there that looks good and then around the head again burnt sienna plus my beige to just kind of allow for this chin area to uh, become just a little bit more subtle and transitions into the darkness and just kind of tapping. That looks good. Maybe a little bit up here, burnt sienna plus my beige. I feel like I need just a little bit more up and through here. He's looking super cute. I'm coming coming into the home stretch with, with these colors here, burnt sienna plus a little bit of beige. And then you can see I didn't go near that the, the front part of the face too much yet because I really want to reserve my bright highlights for that. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to also put a tiny bit of my um, beige and my burnt sienna right at this little uh, top of the head to give myself a little bit of color variation up there as well. You could also bring it a little bit in the sides of the head and through here like that, maybe a touch up here, this is gonna give you that little fluffy look and get those um, colors to just transition out of the darkness into the brightness, which is what I'm gonna put on in just a second here. That looks cute. All right, so now I'm going to um, pick up beige and white, and now I'm gonna start working my way into the bright stuff. So I see some bright stuff going on in through here, also in through here. So this is gonna be where the, the light source, wherever that light source is, is hitting the cat's face the most and where the, the cat's face is protruding the most to the viewer. So I've got it in through here is a little bit lighter. You could also be using a little bit maybe of your uh, tan color if you are um, going through this and it's not really translating exactly as you had thought it was going to. Um, you could add another tone to it by using that um, that uh, tan color. I'm going back into white plus my um, beige to get this bright area right on this left side of the nose. 
something like that. Well, I feel though there's a little here too. And then just kind of rub it out and keep this brightness over here on this left side. There's a cute um, light spot right above the eye too. So that's gonna help um, bring the expression into the cat. So as you're doing animals, that's one thing that I feel is pretty darn important is keeping that expression. And the one of the easier ways to do that is just watching those color patterns around the eyes. So like there's a, a there's a light spot in through here of fur. A lot of times those color patterns help to add to the expression of the of that animal's face. So if I was to have missed these light little patches under the eyes, that I, I might miss part of that um, the expression or the thing that makes the, the the markings on it that make it this particular cat. So again, white plus my beige. I see a a bright area here, which is where that fur is kind of buckling out from the from the boot in through here. And then I've got some white up at the top. Wow, well, I think this is more white plus my beige up at the top. And as you're going through this, if you wanted to add a little bit more of a yellow tone to it, you could certainly add a little bit more yellow into it. I feel like I might want to add a touch of a yellow um, hue to it in a minute, but right now just kind of uh, getting my base uh, color pattern on here as much as I uh, feel is necessary. So just a little bit more of my beige and uh, white and a little bit of my burnt sienna just to get that texture in the face and through there. And then my ears, I'm going to add just a little bit of white in my beige to kind of cross over these guys and through here something like that. And this is where you can start to add that fluffy stuff on top of the ears. I just picked up a little bit extra white just to give myself some bright fluffy stuff on the top of that. I can add a little bit on the top of this ear in through here. So these these little um, additional pieces of hair as you're or pieces of fur as you're going through this process is going to allow for all of that dimensional element to appear. If you can work from the dark to the light and just adding these little bits um, of extra fluff that's lighter on the outside of um, an area that's darker, that will help you to um, create that dimensional element to it. And then I just feel like I want a little extra um, maybe of a yellow tone here. So I'm going to go I'm going to uh, mix uh, yellow and white just to give myself kind of like a little light yellow tone, maybe a little bit more yellow than that, and maybe a touch of red so it doesn't turn too um, in your face yellow. <laughs> so maybe like a light kind of peachy tone. That looks good. Um, so if you're, if you're going through the process and you're saying, I feel like it needs a little bit more color variation or a little bit more deeper of a tone, that's what I was just um, looking to have happen. So I went back into my original colors and just added a more pigment to it. So I added a little bit more yellow and a little bit more red to it so I can have those um, additional variations in the tones. If you need it darker, you can add even more. So even more, a little, little more yellow and red, and that's maybe just a little bit more yellow because that's too pink. And that's going to help to um, deepen those tones and give those um, additional variations in in the fur, in the contours of the head. So I'm digging this color that I just um, am adding to it now. And then I would definitely, as I'm, um, you know, kind of closing in on feeling good about the colors here, I would definitely let mine dry. And then I'm adding just a tiny bit more of my burnt sienna. Um, let mine dry and see if there's any additional um, depth that I want to put into the fur. Maybe like right now I'm just putting a little bit more of my burnt sienna. Maybe just making sure that little crease on the side of the eye is good. And then we're going to be using this same brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, and of course, keep adding, you know, if you feel it needs a little bit more brightness, keep adding that brightness, maybe a little bit on this side of the nose, because my light source is over to the left. Um, I think that looks pretty good. And then we're going to use this same brush for the next step. So you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. 
All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish the fur on the other cat, or the dark cat, or the cat that's on my left. <laughs> I'm using my number three round brush. The colors I'm going to use are Burnt Umber, Black, Beige, White, and maybe a little Burnt Sienna as well. So I'm going to approach it similarly to how I approached this cat, which is working from my dark to my light. This one's got dark in different, similar but different areas. He's he's a darker cat, so or she. I don't know what it is. <laughs> so definitely lots of darkness underneath the chin as the cat is sinking in. The inside of the ears is not going to be pink. It's going to be more of just a brown color. It also has little kind of cute dark um fur along the edges of its ears so we're going to just have fun adding a lot of darkness to it and it's got some fun white stripes and white markings around the eyes too so we're going to be just following the color pattern that is in the photo so i'm going to start with a little bit of brown and black on my brush and i'm going to come right down into this crevice here because i'm just going to do it really dark going into um, this boot so that way I don't really have to do much to it, just kind of um, give it maybe a little bit of texture. I need to figure out where I want the chin to go. So I'm gonna come a little bit down, I would say maybe somewhere in here is where I'm gonna put the chin. And I'm just gonna kind of watch my photo to see where the side of the face kind of ends up. So I see that um, over on the right, if I just kind of travel to my nose, somewhere in through here, this is kind of where I feel the side of the face um, kind of ends up. So I'm going to just kind of give myself almost like just a loose um, sketchily outline of the face. It kind of dips in where that mouth is, and then we've kind of got the little chin, chinny chin chin in through here. So that just gives me kind of my barrier as to where um, that face goes. There's a big shadow. Um, coming out of the boot onto the face. So I'm gonna go just go really, really dark in through here with my black and my brown. I uh, just picked up uh, brown on my dirty brush, so I might ha still have some black, but I just really want this to be pretty darn dark right in through here. It's gonna almost kind of disappear in this little corner in through here. So something like that will get me going. The um, I see some dark stuff on the eyes as well. So from this corner of this eye, I'm going to just pick up a little bit more brown on my brush. Somewhere in, oops, just put my hand in wet paint. <laughs> Somewhere in through here, I've got like a dark um, um, marking on the cat. I'm going to put in place my dark markings on the face right now so I can um, stay in line with that the nose kind of comes, I can almost draw a line from the corner of the eye to the corner of the nose. I could do that, hmm, how convenient. I'll do that on both sides, <laughs> something like that. That just keeps, I can see it on my my um, photo, so I'm gonna put it in the painting. It's got some dark marks coming down in through here, and then the corner of this eye is pretty darn dark, so I'm gonna just pull this down in through here. It's like a little curved mark. So I'm just keep picking up brown paint at this point. I have another um, marking over on the other eye coming out from here. It's kind of more in almost a horizontal line, but, and then drops. And then this is super dark down in through here. I'm gonna actually pick up black for this little corner in through here, get this to go really dark inside um, the corner of the boot. So you can actually see the difference between the cat's face and the boot. That looks pretty good. Bringing this right up to the boot. And then this is just gonna kind of fade into that fur. So there are also um, some dark marks on the face and the ears. I'm gonna go inside the ears right now with, um, I'm gonna wash my brush. I'm gonna go inside the ears with some brown paint and uh, just get that drying while I go put the other um, marks on it. So I've got some, looks like there's a bunch of brown up in the upper portion of the ear. It's probably further down, obviously, probably disappears in the head itself, but 
from the photo, it looks like there's a lot of white fur or lighter fur that's actually on top of that. So I'm just going to put it in through here. And then over on this side, I see a couple of dark streaks somewhere around here in the ear. That looks pretty good. And then the, around the ears, I'm going black and brown with a little bit of water on my brush. There's these fun little um, fluffy pieces of, of uh, black or darker fur right around these eye or these eyes, these ears. So I'm just kind of putting that in place so I can have it out of the way. I guess I could have put it on last, but I was excited about it, so <laughs> we're putting it on now. It almost looks like a little tiny bobcat. It's probably, I'm sure there's domesticated little bobcat versions, and that's kind of what this reminds me of. Um, and I'm seeing a bunch of little tiny uh, dark fur coming out these sides. So this is um, producing a, an easy way for me to get these little um, dark things in here, these darker hairs. I, I feel like I'm seeing them in the photo along these edges and, and it's an easy place for me to kind of start and um, just kind of pull them out. Again, watered down black paint is um, what I'm using right now. I don't see much more there. That's looking pretty good. So that was so that was so fun. I want to do that all day long. Um, I'm going to pick up now watered down brown and black paint and I'm going to start marking up where I see the patterns on the face. So I've got a couple of, um, of lines in through here. So we've got one there, one there, and then this forehead has a bunch of um, little dark areas in through here. So I'm using my light base as just kind of the foundation, but I'm adding all of this dark hair on top of it or fur on top of it. Um, there's a dark section in through here and I'm kind of maneuvering between black and brown um, as I'm looking at the photo wherever I see um, it's deep dark black I'm gonna pull I'm gonna pull in more of the black. So I'm also watching where these markings are in respect or uh, proportion or in relationship to something else. So there's a marking, a dark marking above this eye. So I, I want to make sure I put it in a pretty um, good position. So it's coming up from this corner and it's a little bit lower than this one. So I can I can kind of put it right in through here. And again, this was what I was talking about with, with the boots. You don't need to get everything exactly one for one, but if you can get the the basic elements in there in in a believable place, the dominant elements in there, that's going to allow you the the liberty to kind of be a little bit looser and freer with the other stuff because these are the elements that people are their eye is going to be drawn to. Um, I feel that this nose needs a little bit of darkness on it as well, so I'm just kind of rubbing my brush, the remnants on my brush kind of along this nose area, a little bit down that center. And when I get to the areas where I, I want some darkness, but I don't necessarily want to um, add more paint to my brush, that's where I can just put a little bit of water on my brush because I know I have a dark color in my bristles right now. And that little bit of water on my brush is going to help just kind of release um, a, a kind of a transparent version of um, of that paint onto onto the animal. So I've got we've got some in through here. I need to pick up some more brown because we definitely have some markings in through here underneath this eye. We've got a good one over in through here. One little one right here, and then just kind of blend it out. I'm going to pick up some of my beige with brown right now to get um, this little area in through here, going with a couple of different tones in it, something like that. The mouth area is pretty uh, light or white, so I'm okay with that. I need to pick up a little bit more brown. And then right now I'm just kind of floating around. I got most of the um, markings where I want. I need more brown on the top of the head. I just picked up more brown. I've got a kind of watch uh, this is white and it kind of, I got to close off this marking right here. 
because I see that it's closed off on the kitty's face. So this little mark is closed off. This little mark is also closed. It's almost like he's got little white horns on his, on his, uh, on his forehead here. It's so cute. So a little bit more brown. Get these top um, darker areas. I'm going to start kind of using more of a curved type of brush stroke just to kind of um, as opposed to super straight just to give the uh, appearance or have these pieces of fur kind of going around the head something like this and once I've got the, all the dark areas on here I don't necessarily have to um, continue to use my dark paint if I if I feel that there's an area that I want to pull some of that lighter paint in I can certainly do that got to get I got a little darkness down in through here I've got darkness in through here around that side of the face there we go that's looking pretty good and a little bit more of my brown and you could also pick up you know your your shoe your boot color too if you wanted to you could pick up any variation I'm, i think i'm actually going to pick up a little burnt sienna over here on this side i feel like this side has a little bit more color in it so i'm just kind of adding little little bits of additional color over here this is burnt sienna and brown right now gonna i have this little area over here that i need to attend to so that takes care of that and again as i'm going through here you know kind of doing a rapid fire approach here where I'm just seeing a color and I'm saying, oh, okay, I'm going to put it there. But you could certainly slow down. Um, actually, I'm putting some more brown on my brush right now um, just to tone that chin down a little bit. You could slow down and watch every single little nuance of, uh, of the face and make sure that you've got everything, exact, every hair in place. I just picked up some of my cream color or my beige color just make sure that that's in there i need more darkness on that head so i'm picking up more brown i think i'm going to pick up a little bit of black also with a little bit of water on my brush because i feel that this area in through here definitely needs um some more some more fullness to it so this is going to be these little dark pieces in through here I might have taken, I might have gotten rid of that little horn thing, but that's okay. I can bring that back at any time. Uh, just little little bits and pieces here and there. And if you also felt like you wanted to use a larger brush, you could certainly use a larger brush when it comes to this kind of detail stuff. Um, I do want to put some of that white on in a minute because he's got some some white um, definitely in in his fur. But just picking up a little bit more brown get over here and now I'm gonna um, I'm gonna pick up some white and beige on my brush so I can get this nice bright area over here on his little face in through here is pretty darn white and you could use white plus your brown if you wanted to or your tan whatever kind of works for you he's got a big light spot over here big light spot on his um, mouth as well or the chin right in through here so it, this is all based on where that light source is hitting him from so i'm just making sure he's gonna have some whiskers too so if you if you bump into areas you didn't intend to like i just did don't worry we'll put some whiskers on it um just making sure that i've got these areas that are a little bit lighter to pop out and give um give him a little bit more uh, fullness. I'm going to make sure I've got this light part right underneath his eye. Similarly to what I was talking about the other cat, these light um, markings are what's going to make this cat its own individual cat. So if you're going through it and you're like, well, I like it, but I don't necessarily need it to be exactly that cat, then you can put these markings somewhere else. But I'm, I'm going for what it appears to be in the photo that I'm using as my reference. You could certainly make yours um, any, any other way that you would like. And then I'm going to get a little bit more lightness over on this side. This side might not be as light as this side simply because it's on the other side of the face. So you could add uh, more of the cream color if you wanted as opposed to white and then just darken up the areas around it. I do want to put some lightness in those ears. So I'm going to do that with white and I think I'm going to use white. Mm, I'm going white and pink. 
<laughs> white and pink. I feel like there's a little pink hue to the um, to these little hairs in the ear. I could be seeing something that I'm, you know, not could be not true, <laughs> but that's what I'm seeing right now. So I'm just kind of adding that in there. I don't need it to go too much farther than. Um, the ear itself, so white plus a little pink. I don't know if I said I was going to use pink, but I used a little pink in this. Um, so just white plus that, little extra bits on the ears. That looks pretty good. And if you, you know, wanted to add anything else, I think I'm feeling like I've got, I'm going burnt sienna and beige right now. I'm feeling like I've got it pretty well under control as far as um, what I want and where I want it, but I might need to add a little bit more uh, depth in that fur on the forehead. So I'm just picking up a little bit more brown and black, and I'm just going to kind of keep adding these little these little bits until I feel that I've got that dimension in there that that I've seen in in the photo. So sometimes these fur layers can really take on. Uh, an extended <laughs> period of time as you're as you're developing them and don't feel that if you don't get it on the first pass that you didn't you didn't accomplish it in the correct way the you know finding your groove when it comes to doing fur can often take quite a while to to get comfortable with or to get those tones the way that you want them you know I I use multiple different brushes when I'm doing um, fur so you can, you know, your brush that is comfortable to you might be different than the brush that's comfortable to me. It's all about finding the um, the way that works works best for you as you're as you're developing your your painting processes and and styles. And then I feel I just need to add a little bit more over in through here, and then just finding where you feel that something might look a little flat or needs a little bit more information to it. I don't feel like this color should be the same as this color, so I'm gonna add a little bit more darkness down into here. Maybe not all the way, but something down there to just kind of um, adhere to it the way that it looks to me in the photo. And there's so many different shadows on um, this photo, so I, I'm feeling like I'm doing a pretty good job in through here adding a little bit of lightness to this side of the eye and then I'm definitely going to put a little bit more darkness in this nose so I just picked up a tiny bit more uh, black because I feel that the nose is not um, popping the way that it needs to it's just kind of almost disappearing in his face so if you you know even though you already did the nose if you feel that you need to add those kind of details to it don't feel that you can't, you, you know, once you're done a step, that doesn't mean you can't go back and, and tweak it at all. I'm putting a little bit more around those eyes. So, you know, those are the things that you make the decision if you feel that you need to or want to do them, you certainly can. And then I'm just going to fiddle with mine a little bit more. We have another step that we're going to be doing with this small paintbrush. So once you've got this done, again, fiddle with it as much as you want. It might put a little bit more um, fur up here in the top because he's so freaking cute and I keep wanting to add more and more but once you've got it where it is pleasing to your eye you can um, what are we gonna do you can uh, put this large or this <laughs> medium round brush away take out a small detail brush and get ready for the next step All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting whiskers. I'm gonna be using my small detail brush, my number zero detail brush, and I'm gonna be using white paint. I'm going to be um, using this with a little bit of water in it. So I'll just put a little on the side and put a little water in it. When I do my whiskers, I say a lot of prayers <laughs> and I just go for it because that's the way that they come out the most natural for me. I make sure that my paint is a nice thin, ink consistency and then I just go for it. So I, I'm going to start with this guy over here and my whiskers I'm going to have kind of coming out of his cheeks and because I'm using a watered down uh, paint some of them are going to be brighter, some of them are going to be darker, they'll take on a little bit of the the color behind them and that to me just makes it look a little bit more natural. So you can uh, find your 
your rhythm when it comes to um, whiskers. They, you know, you can really do them a million and one different ways. This is just my kind of way to um, do them in a, for me, as, as best of a way as I can do them and as in as believable of a way. I also like to rest my hand on my canvas so while I'm doing these, so that prevents me from pushing my brush too hard into the canvas. If I push my brush really hard, that's gonna make a really wide line. But if I control myself uh, by putting my the, the uh, side of my hand on my canvas, that allows me to not push my brush any further than my hand will go. So that's another little trick and bringing some out past that boot that looks cute. I think that's all I need on that side. We're going to go to the other side and do some over here. So I, a lot of times we'll do little whisker holes too, but I, the cheeks on these cats are really light. So I don't feel that, um, you'd necessarily see them. I do recommend doing your whiskers in different directions. So, you know, as you do them, maybe cross one over another one in a different direction. And that'll again, make them look nice and natural and whatever you do on one side if you've got some long ones on one side put some long ones on the other side some cats even have them coming out their um their eye area so if you felt that you know you could get away with it or that it would benefit you to put a couple up in through there feel free to do so and i'm thinking that's all i need to do so uh we are going to be using this same little brush for the next step. So once you've got your whiskers done, you can wash and dry this uh, small detail brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are onto the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is the sign it. So I'm gonna use my number zero round brush. The I'm gonna sign it in the bottom left. I'm gonna be using black paint. I like to sign mine with my initials, but you could of course sign yours with your first name or the date. You could make up a special symbol. You get to sign it however you want because it's your painting and the identity of it <laughs> or the marking of it. Mm, this, I should have used my bigger brush. The identity of it is up to you because that's the decisions you get to make as the artist. And that is gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself two adorable kittens who are finding a comfy spot to sit in some boots. <laughs> and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.